Well, on this Remembrance Day, a typical November day on Vancouver Island, we've had sun, we've had overcast, we've had rain, we've had all three at once. But here we are, the 115th Canadian Bowl. Thanks so much. Our coverage on Telesoptic and BCFC TV. I'm Andy Neal. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, it's two teams that have been the class of their conference all year long. We start with the Saskatoon Hilltops. No team has won this game more than they have. The Canadian Bowl 22 time champions highlighted by six straight wins between 2014 and 2019. They haven't played in the Canadian Bowl since that 19 championship, which by the Huskies or by the Hilltop standards is a bit of a drought that you have to go back to 2004 to 06 the last time there was three years that the Hilltops didn't play over the Canadian Junior Football Championship, but they're back in a big way, going undefeated during the regular season. Had a scare against Regina in the Prairie Football Conference Championship, trailed going into the fourth quarter, pulled that out, and then it was no doubt against the St. Clair Saints from Windsor, Ontario in the Jostens Cup semifinal of 43 nothing win. So they come here to Langford to face the hometown West Shore Rebels who have been to this game now three times. There are two previous attempts. They lost both times to the Hilltops, but if there's a Rebels team that was going to change their fortunes, this one might be it. No team dominated the BCFC like they did, outscoring the opposition 583 to 112, completely dominant. They went 10 and 0 in the regular season, and then in the playoffs, knocking off the last two Canadian Bowl champions, the Langley Rams in the semifinal, and then the defending champion Okanagan Sun, 33-19 a couple of weeks ago for the Cullen Cup Championship, and getting some redemption for the BCFC title game loss that they had at the hands of the Sun last year in Kelowna. So this game sets up to be quite a doozy between the Hilltops and the Rebels. Tyler Bennett has the call of the game and he gives us more in this matchup between the Tops and the Rebels here today. The history of the Canadian Bowl dates all the way back to 1908. It was first awarded to the Parkland Canoe Club of Toronto. It's gone through many iterations, but it's been the acclaimed prize of junior football in Canada for over a century. Fast forward 115 years later, and the annual East vs. West Clash pits together two undefeated programs, one with a storied history and another looking to etch their name on the Canadian Bowl for the very first time. The Saskatoon Hilltops have won the Canadian Bowl 22 times, by far surpassing any other junior football program in the country. However, this is the Hilltops' first trip back to the national championship game since 2019. We thought we were going to have a pretty good year last year and it didn't work out the way we thought it was going to. And the reality was this coaching staff, these players, they came together. They just showed me a chemistry and a, and a heartbeat that's, uh, you know, that, that just sort of sums up what Hilltop tradition is all about. We know it's our last week together with this exact group of guys, so we're trying to cherish it, but also, you know, take it serious. We know it, that this West Shore team is a really good team, so... We're locked in, but also trying to enjoy our, each other's company. It's pretty exciting to be back here and to be playing. Last time we were playing here, it was a bit of a different, like way different team, and now we got a whole bunch of younger guys playing, and it's everyone's pretty excited. The Hilltops will meet the West Shore Rebels playing in their first national title game since 2016, which was a 37-25 loss to Saskatoon of all teams. This Rebels group comes into the national title game with an undefeated regular season record, a first in program history. We definitely did say uh, the goal is to be able to compete for a Canadian Bowl and ultimately win a Canadian Bowl. We're committed to, to doing it better than it's ever been done and uh, understand what comes along with that. And at the end of every day, um, making it very clear, uh, you need to assess yourself and, and did you live up to that standard. You know, Coach Dex really showed us, uh, showed us the ropes of uh, all the small tendencies that we need to, uh, to accomplish a goal like this. And, um, you know, we, we trust him and uh, we just stick to the plan and keep, keep the train moving. We know we're going to go in there, it's going to be a tough game. Like, we know it's a championship game. They're going to be playing their hardest, we're going to be playing their hardest. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's going to be a tough, fast, physical game. Well, it's sure to be a raucous crowd at Starlight Stadium. The Canadian Bowl has been awarded to the road team in each of the last three national title games. And in the last decade, the visitors have walked away champions in seven of the last ten Canadian Bowls, with the majority of those victories coming from the Saskatoon Hilltops. Saskatoon is pretty, it's pretty cold, so coming here is, is pretty nice. When it's even if it's raining a little bit, that's nothing compared to the snow in Saskatoon. So I, I don't mind coming on the road right now. We got to take in all scenarios, all situations, and the good thing is, this coaches has been been around these games a long, long time. So we embrace that. You know, we love a challenge for the Rebels. It's been a season of breaking through expectations and records. 
but with a full house and the pressure on to win that first national title at home, composure will be key. We don't really feel much pressure. I wouldn't say we feel much pressure. I don't know. We're trying to just treat it like a, another game because at the end of the day, if you treat it like it's something special, that's when anxiety starts building up and you start to, that's when you get nervous and stuff like that. So you just got to try and treat it like another game. Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be the most bonded team that is here at the end of the season. Uh, one being the, the most bonded team is going to have the ability to overcome the adversity and uh, being able to, to pick each other up when we need to. So uh, I'd say that's uh, the best part about our team. I was just uh, really, really anxious and looking forward to coming into this next game and uh, you know, showing what we can do and uh, proving that uh, we can be national champions. It's a tale as old as time. The perennial champions against the emerging challengers. Two great teams, but only one will be able to call themselves 2023 Canadian Bowl champions. Great stuff from Tyler, and we'll hear from Tyler and Tyler McLaren, who will be doing color for tonight's game in a little bit. Should be a great game, but we're getting set for kickoff in a little bit. We'll take a quick break and come back for more from Starlight Stadium in Langford, B.C., and the 115th Canadian Bowl, the Canadian Junior Championship up for grabs between Saskatoon and West Shore when we come back. Back at Starlight Stadium in Langford, B.C., where the visiting Saskatoon Hilltops are getting set to face the West Shore Rebels. One of these teams will end up with a perfect season and the title of the Canadian Bowl. Welcome back. I'm Andy Neal. Well, these two coaches, two different stories. One that's coached for a long time for the Saskatoon Hilltops and Tom Sargent. And Dexter Janke, his first year as head coach of the West Shore Rebels, couldn't have asked for a better year as he's guided his team to this Canadian Bowl on their home turf. Tyler Bennett had a chance to catch up with Dexter before today's game. Well, Coach, I uh, just want to know what your message was to the guys this morning in the biggest game of the season. Yeah, uh, the message to the guys is that uh, we don't need to do anything more than your job. Uh, we're here for a reason. We've earned the opportunity and, and the right to be here. So uh, just focus on executing your, your role and your job, and uh, it will, it'll turn out fine for us. What are you expecting from the Hilltops today? I'm expecting a, a hard-nosed team, a well-disciplined team, a team that's not going to give up. Um, it's going to be a good game. What are the keys to, to coming out on top here today? Uh, it's playing penalty free, winning the turnover battle, and uh, not taking uh, the undis uh, undisciplined penalties that uh, will put us in more difficult situations. Seeing a raucous crowd behind you, how excited are the guys to play here today? Oh, it's a, it's a great atmosphere right now. This is perfect West Coast weather. Uh, we're, we're all looking forward to this. Thank you and good luck today, Coach. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Well, Coach, I uh, just want to know, uh, you know, coming into the biggest game of the season, what was your message to the guys this morning? Well, real simple, play with one heartbeat. You know, it's a team game, and make sure you rely on the guy beside you. And when in doubt, look, the, look in the eye of your fifth-year player. Follow them. They will lead us. And at the end of the day, come out and play for your brothers, your fifth-year players. Put your best foot forward. What are you expecting from this Rebel side today? Well, hey, they're they're explosive, athletic, big play team. So we got to keep things in check. We got to know where their their high end players are on both on offense and defense. And uh, you know, we got to execute the plans that we have in place to uh, you know sort of make their life a little miserable. What's going to be the key factor in, in who comes away with the Canadian Bowl today? Well, I think it's real simple. Who controls the line of scrimmage and who who controls the who wins the plus minus turnover battle? So if, if those two things happen, that's usually what we call hilltop football. Then it's going to be a great day for the blue and gold. You traveled over 1,600 kilometers to get here. How pumped did the guys to get on that field and play? Yeah, they're ready. You know, anytime you come out of the Prairie Football Conference, you know you're battle tested. You know you're game ready. So hey, kick us coming soon enough. Let's get it on. Thanks, Coach. Good luck today. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Sure is coming quick. Let's hear from men calling it Tyler Bennett and Tyler McLaren. Guys? 
Yes, it is windy, it is cold, and we are ready to play some football. And here we go as kickoff has just got underway here at Starlight Stadium. Let's get right onto the action as it's a big tackle right off of the top as the Hilltop Special Teams Unit quickly in on the tackle. And away we go. The 2023 Canadian Bowl is underway. That was number 17. That's Dalton Urban making the tackle. And West Shore in red will be going from left to right on your screens. The Hilltops in their yellow, blue, and white will be going from right to left. West Shore starts with the football here. They've been slow in their first couple uh, first couple games this year, Tyler, and how big is it to get a good start in this football game? Oh, first, first drive is key for West Shore. They want to get going right right off the bat here, and they get a run right off the right-hand side, so positive gain there, but they want to get a fast start. Both teams probably do. Jump on the other one as fast as you can. And that was Garen Hardesty with five yards on that carry. Makes it second and five. And T. Jesse coming into this game uh, last night awarded the 2023 CJFL Offensive Player of the Year Award. Just goes to show the body of work that T. has done this year with the Rebels. And on second and five, Jesse going to throw this one. Here comes the pressure. Jesse eluding, trying to get out of the way. And he is going to be brought down. A flag is down on this play. Not quite a first down. So we'll have to wait and see where this penalty goes towards likely a, likely a holding call against the rebels and that that will be the case so they'll decline this and the hilltops get exactly what they want on this the first drive is they get a two and out by the rebels so rebels will have to kick early uh, hilltops should get good field position after this punt so good start for the hilltops on defense here as they get a quick two and out there you see on your screen t jesse what a season 41 touchdown passes that's the most in cjfl history he was first in the bcfc in passing yards and he won the 2023 bcfc offensive mvp for the second consecutive year so quite the season from t jesse offensively but on that first drive not a lot to speak of and the rebels gonna punt this one away chris mcclarty is gonna kick this one out and that's a good snap and this one is booted well towards midfield and this is going to be picked up at the Hilltops right at the 55. And not much place to go there as there's a couple Rebels in on the tackle. And back out comes this Hilltops offense. They're led by Trey Reeder, who kind of took the starting job midway through the season and has shown promise in this playoffs. Um, he's really slung the ball really well. And Boston Davidson got to talk about him too. Two big time players for the Hilltops. Yeah, they're explosive. Both these teams are explosive, have a lot of weapons. So this should be an exciting game if the elements hold off. But I expect a lot of fireworks on both sides of the ball for the offenses today. Reader, number three on your screen, under center, gets the receivers in motion. He's going to throw on first down. That is tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Didn't see who got a hand on it, but it wasn't going very far. That might have been Praise Odegun on the play, and that's going to bring up second and ten. Yeah, I think it was Praise there, as we'll see on the replay here. Is a lot of times it's a quick throw and, and drop and throw, and, and coaches always say if you can't get to the quarterback and in a three-step drop like that, very hard to do so. So good job there. The next best thing for the Rebels there is you get your hands up, knock the ball down, making an incomplete pass. Second and ten. Hilltops need to move here if they don't want to punt this ball away. Reader's going to throw again to the left, and it is going to be caught, but well short of a first down as two Rebels in on the tackle. And that was number 86, Drake Douglas, with the reception. But it's going to be third and four, so it's decision time here for the Hilltops. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation on the Hilltop bench, but Coach Sargent decides to send out what I'm guessing is their punt team. As When the weather's like this, lots of times it's not a bad idea to play field position. The Rebels weren't able to do much on offense on that first drive, and I think Coach Sergeant, so, excuse me, Coach Sergeant has been in this game many times is thinking if we could pin the Rebels deep here, a place of defense, and then eventually get our offense back on the field. Matt Wist going to kick this ball away for the Hilltops. That's a good kick into the corner. Cairo Berry going to take a look at this one, but it's going to roll out of bounds near about the five-yard line. So a good kick there, and the Rebels are going to have to start deep in their own end here in the first quarter. Yeah, always a good way to when you got a dangerous returner back there like Cairo Berry, one of the best in the country. Is when the ball goes out of bounds, there's not much he can do about it. So good kick by the Hilltops there. They do they get what they want. They pin the Rebels back to around their own 10-yard line or so. So the Rebels have to try and get a couple first downs, at least tilt the field back in their favor. And that's what they'll be looking to do on this drive. The wind is blowing at the Rebels here in this first quarter. The rain is sideways. It is nasty what conditions here on Remembrance Day at Starlight Stadium. We'll see if that comes into effect as Jesse is going to hand the ball off to Garen Hardesty up the middle on first down. It's a good run and a power move right at the defender. That's 
Uh, Justin Adamko making the tackle. Garen Hardesty moving the chains on first down with a good game. And we've seen Jaron do this all year for the Rebels, and he's he's a, he's a bigger, he plays a lot bigger than he is. And you see this run right here off the right side. There wasn't a ton of room there for Jaron to get through. And at the end of that run, just lowers his head and gets the first down for his team. So they got one first down here, and I know the Rebels will be looking for more to get out of there, get out of, get some field position back in their favor. Ball is spotted at about the 20 yard line here. First and 10 for the Rebels. Jesse is going to hand it off again if it works once. Try again. Hardesty with a nice swim move to get around one, but he is going to be brought down as the Hilltops collapse in on quickly. It's only a gain of a couple there. It's going to bring up second and seven. Great team defense there by the Saskatoon Hilltops as there was a host of gold helmets right there. Corelli and Jared Hardesty, or that was Malik, excuse me. So nice defense there by the Hilltops as the spin did get them a few yards, about five on the play. So Decent gain on first down for the Rebels, but well, well played on the defensive front by the Saskatoon Hilltops. Second and seven. Jesse probably going to need to throw this ball to get the first down as there goes Hardesty out of the backfield, so it's going to be a throw here. Here comes the pressure, and oh, that is going to oh be yeah. incomplete, but flag on the play as Hardesty was interfered with on that as that was uh, Wade Keating with the pass interference, and it looks like the Rebels are going to get an automatic first down here. Yeah, this is going to be a pass interference against the Hilltops. No question about that call there, as if we get a replay, we'll see. Yes, spot fell, yes. It is a pass interference. That one, not a lot of argument there coming from the Hilltops. Pass interference. Just a little bit Saskatoon early. Saskatoon number 20. Just a little bit spot early on that one. So another first, first down. down for the Rebels as they get move the sticks. So Jaron Hardis, T had the time to throw the ball, and that was the key, as you can see. He's got a couple seconds to find his receiver and he decided to dump it off to, to Jaron Hardesty and the Rebels now get a first down. Ball moves up to the 30 yard line. First and 10, Malik Gagne-Smith into the game. It's his first snap of the ball game in the backfield alongside Jesse. Jesse takes the snap, it's a handoff to Malik. He's gonna look up the middle and he's gonna run into a wall of hilltops. It's only a gain of about four. And that's going to bring up a second and six as Malik Gagne-Smith gets his first touch of the ball game. Good touch there by Malik. Does able to dart off the right-hand side, get a few yards, about four or five almost on that play. So the Rebels can establish a running back. That's going to set up their play-action pass. And when they can set up their play-action pass, that's when they're going to be able to take some shots down the field. So as the Rebels continue to move out of their own end more and more, don't be surprised if that could pull the Hilltop defenders up and the Rebels may take a shot down the field. Second and five. Jesse spreading out the offense, another empty backfield formation. Here's the throw, it's gonna be caught by Cairo Berry. He's got a first down and then some as Cairo Berry with a 20 yard reception, his first of the game. That's a good sign if you're a Rebels fan, a big first down. Yeah, and if you're T. Jesse, you wanna get the ball in that man's hands right off the bat as he's gonna be a dynamic force today and needed to make some plays for the Rebels on offense, especially with Kieran Passant not in the ball game. So that is a massive play for the Rebels and now Quickly, they're out on now in Saskatoon Hilltop. So big play by the Rebels to get some good field position here. There you see on the screen, 18 touchdown receptions during the regular season. That is a CJFL record. So look out for number three in this ball game as Jesse takes the snap on first down. It's a handoff play to Hardesty. Goes right to left with the hurdle. And does he get the first down? What a play by Karen Hardesty. He is firing up this crowd. And it is a raucous crowd here at Starlight Stadium as the Rebels offense getting the crowd in the game early. You saw the power of Jaron Hardesty before earlier in this drive when he lowered his shoulder at the end of the run. There you see his pure athleticism and ability to cut on a dime. Jaron Hardesty brings the crowd out of their seats here at Starlight. That's a big play. Gets about eight and a half or nine and Rebels are close enough getting another first down. Second and one. Jesse takes the snap. It's another handoff to Hardesty. He's going to go wide, but here come the Hilltops, and it's a big tackle. That's Wade Keating stopping Hardesty be behind the line of scrimmage, and the Rebels are going to have to punt this ball away. Fantastic defensive play by there by Keating as he, he was trying to find a spot, and it's the Rebels tried to run off, the, off their right, which they've had success on this drive, but Keating was able to knife through there, get to the, get to the Rebel before he was able to dart and make a move. So nice stop there by Keating in the Saskatoon defense. Chris McClarty, the Rebels punter number 87, is going to kick this ball away. It's a good snap. He's got lots of time, and he's going to boot this down towards the right end zone. That is going to be caught, and that is going to be a quick tackle by Josh Hoyt. Good job by the Rebels special teams unit to get in on the tackle, and nowhere to go there for Drake Douglas. 
Great job there as the Rebels special teams, their cover teams get down the field, limit that return. Both kickers you could see earlier trying to pin the ball within the hash marks of the sideline, so they don't want any of these explosive returners to get loose today because it could be a big special team play that is, a bit, is different. So Rebels do exactly what they want to in their second drive of the day. Now the Hilltops are back in their own territory. We'll see if they can play some defense to get the ball back. It's been a fast moving first quarter here. Not a lot of stoppages, Trey Reader. Barking out the signals. It's going to be a handoff to Boston Davidson up the left side. And he is going to keep going. Look at Boston Davidson as he works his way towards a first down after about five yards after contact. Number 24 on your screen, Boston Davidson with a big run for the first down. Great run there by Davidson as he brings a little bit of the same, same intangibles that the Rebels had with Jaron Hardesty as he comes off the left side. And you can see his stats there, seven touchdowns in the PFC this year, over a thousand yards, and you just saw why right there as he had a great run there, getting a first down for Saskatoon. So that moves the chains as the Hilltops move up the field towards the 40-yard line. Reader gonna take the snap. It's another handoff to Davidson, and this time he's not gonna get as far as he ran into some Rebels linemen, as it's gonna be a gain of about five, and it's gonna be second and five. Still good gain there for the Hilltops. So we heard we heard Coach Sargent off the top saying, line of scrimmage is key today, and, that, and both these teams are probably preaching that message. Turnover is gonna be another big key. Coach Sargent touched on that, so and it, when the weather's like this, those are the types of things that I guarantee you both these teams have said, boys, we gotta, need, we gotta win in the trenches today. The rain is coming down in buckets. The wind is coming in sideways. This is a November football game, if I've ever seen one, as Reed are going to take the snap on second and six. It's a pass-off play, and here comes the Hilltops with lots of room to work with. It's a first down and then some, as it's a Charles Sawai making that play, and that is another Hilltops first down. Nice play there by Sawai as he was able to get in the open field, and the guy, if we see the replay, the guy who was able to break the tackle and enable him to get the first down was none other than number 22, DeMar Hosting, right there as he was able to shake free. And that's not an easy guy to shake free from. So great job there by the Hilltops to get a first down by Sawai. And now they're marching here as they're approaching midfield. First and 10, near the 55. Hilltops are marching here. Reader going to hand off to Davidson. He's looking up the middle, and he is free as what a run by Boston Davidson. Just bowling ball through the Rebels' defense. That's another big gain, and that's going to move the chains once again. Another really nice run here by Boston. Watch the lead block as it comes right off the right side. Boom, right there. You see it on the end of your, on the end of your screen. And these guys are hitting today. We haven't seen contact and pace and tempo like this in a long time. So both teams really trying to establish their toughness, really fighting for every inch. And that's a heck of a run there by the Hilltops. The Hilltops now into Rebel territory here. Ball spotted just shy of the 40-yard line. Reader takes the snap. It's another handoff play. Here comes Boston Davidson again. And this time it's only a gain of about six as the Hilltops have been run heavy on offense so far, and that's going to bring up a second and four. Yeah, establishing the run, like we said, is going to be a key component of this. There's a flag, I think, on the play here. We're going to see what our head referee, Heath. So there is an offside call against the Hilltop, so that Rebels will definitely be taking that penalty. That'll bring up a first to 15, but that was a good, another good run there, but both teams definitely going to establish a run game today. We've seen that for sure with the Hilltops, so they haven't tried to throw the ball much at all. So now a first and 15 for the Hilltops who might have to rely on the pass to make it here, but the way that Boston Davidson's been running, they might not. As Reader gets his formation out, they're going to bring an extra back behind the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be a play action here, and it is wide open. Daylight for the Hilltops. It's a first down and then some. A huge play, as that is Corbin Evan with the 20-yard reception on the play action, completely fooled the Rebels' defense, and it's another Hilltops first down. That's exactly why when you get a running game going, there's your play action pass. Evan's able to sneak out into the backfield like that. Rebels' defense caught off guard as they're respecting the run that the Hilltops have established already here today. So that's what the benefits of having a running game enables you to do on offense is it sets plays exactly like that up. And good job there by the Hilltops. Here's a first and 10. It's going to be Boston Davidson on the pitch. And it's going to be a gain of about five as Cody McMahon and DeMar Hohenstein, two of the anchors on the Rebels' defense, make that tackle. And it's second and five. Boston Davidson, another nice run there. As I can say, he's going to be a test for the Rebels because I'm not sure if they've seen a back like him and how explosive he is. I watched the play a couple times this year, so 
He, they're going to have their hands full, and the Rebels have to be able to adjust, understand that that's going to be what the Hilltops are going to try and do today, and try and limit him as much as they can. Second and five, and it's going to be another handoff to Davidson. He's got the first down on the cut, and he's still going, and he is going to be brought down close to the goal line. This is going to bring up a first and goal, and the traveling Hilltops fans are fired up here at Starlight Stadium. Oh, yeah, fans still coming in here, as we see in the parking lot, so... Yeah, they're, they're ruckus now as the Hilltops have responded for the really good drive of their own as there looks to be an injured Rebel on the play. But love the way Boston Davidson is running today, and, and that's a benefit to this Hilltop offense for sure. So that will give us our first little break of this ball game as that looks like Ted Windham Jr. who is down in the field all the way down there. So hopefully he is all right. But just talking about the, the composure, we talked about the, the slow starts from the Rebels, especially in the last couple of games. We saw it against Langley in the semifinal, against Okanagan, it took them two quarters to really wake up. Are you concerned that maybe this has kind of been the way they've come out of the gates in the last few games? It does seem to be their MO as we see the Rebel get to his feet. That's a good sign. But it does seem to be their MO as, as far as the slow starts. And I don't think they wanted that against an opponent like this and on today with the weather and the wind. So I'm sure they they were hoping for a fast start. They're still still a scoreless game here in the first quarter. So no reason to panic by the Rebels. And we've seen how they can score in droves. They got 29 points in one quarter, I believe it was against the Okanagan Suns. So they can score in bunches, but it's much easier to be able to play when you're when you're ahead. It allows you to do different things on offense and defense. So Rebels definitely want to make it get off to a better start than, and change the uh, the tendencies of late for them. So Ted Windham Jr. coming off the field here, and we're about to get back into action here. Again, you see the conditions here at Starlight Stadium by far from optimal. It is wet, it is cold, it is windy. It is November in Victoria. And it's the last football game here of the 2023 CJFL season. And one way or another, we're gonna be handing out the Canadian Bowl at the end of this football game. Both teams trying hard here. As the Hilltops line up, it is first and goal at the six yard line. Rebels needing a stop here as it's gonna be a fumble and will it be recovered by the Rebels? It will be, what a play, what a turn of events. Boston Davidson on the fumble and the Rebels get a huge stop early in this football game. Unfortunate break there for the Saskatoon Hilltops but the Rebels will say thank you very much. And we touched on that as much as they want to establish a line of scrimmage. Turnovers are definitely going to be a key there, and you can see probably a wet football that affected Davidson. Unfortunately for him and the Hilltops and their fans, he wasn't able to keep get on the ball. So big break early and turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. It's going to be a, a key to today's game. So you want to win that battle, as Coach Sargent said right off the top. Praise Odegun with the fumble recovery, and the Rebels keep the Hilltops at bay for now as T. Jesse taking over near his own goal line. And they're gonna go to the ground as well. Garrett Hardesty looking for any option, but simply nothing there as he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of yardage. And the Hilltops defense so far has the Rebels in knots. That one I think if we get, I mean, we'll see if we get a replay on that one, but I thought Hardesty had a little bit of room off the right-hand side. And to me, in my opinion, and I love the way Hardesty plays, he's a, he's a terrific ball player, but in that one, he looks like there was a little too much dancing for my liking. You could see him start, stop, looking around. Sometimes if you see a crease and Hardesty's good enough to hit it, he's just got to hit it and go, not dance like he did on that particular play. So that's going to bring up a second and 10. The Rebels needing to move here. As Jesse takes the snap, here comes the pressure. It is a throw down field. It is caught. Tristan Ramos Aravallo with a 15-yard reception, and that's going to move the chains as number 81 makes the reception, and that is a Rebels first down. Great shot there by T. Jesse as he throws the ball vertical right down the seam on that one, and he put that at an arc, getting it over the second level, as you can see there. T doesn't really dart that one in. It's kind of a higher throw, so he can get it up and over the defenders. And he's going to have those creases there, just like the Hilltops when they run the ball. Those are going to open up. If the, if the Rebels can establish a run, those are the shots that Jesse's going to have throughout today. No Kieran Passant once again for the Rebels. Number eight, a huge hit to their offensive weaponry. And plays like that are going to keep them in this ball game. As Hardesty going right up the middle, he is going to get only about four yards on that play. 
and that's going to bring up a second and six. Only a few yards there, but you can see it, turned, it was about four, Tyler, on that one, but much better running there from in a weather like today and what you're going to have to work and grind out against the Saskatoon defense. That's how I think the Rebels will prefer hardest he ran, as he just came off the right-hand side there, no hesitation, got what he can, lowered his shoulder, and still picked up four yards for his team, and that's a much better run compared to the one he did previous. Second and six. Looks like an audible on here for the Rebels. And there's the snap, flags fly. Looks like somebody was offside, so Cairo Berry's still gonna catch this one. He's got a first down, but he's not gonna get much further as this play could be coming back. We're not sure who this penalty is against, but we'll wait and find out. I think it's early movement by the Hilltops as they look to have jumped on that one. We'll wait for the head referee, Heath Edelson, because their eyes down on the field are probably better than ours up here in the broadcast booth, but look to be early movement by the Hilltops. And if that's the case, that's the Rebels will decline this penalty. It is against the Hilltop, so Dexter Jenke and the Rebels will decline that penalty after the big Cairo Berry catch. So Rebels responding here after getting the turnover, approaching midfield and having a good drive. So that's another good shot there by T. Jesse as he goes to what his favorite target, Cairo Berry. Cairo's second reception of the day. It's a 15-yard gain, and that's going to move the ball up near midfield. So mission accomplished for the Rebels to get out of their own territory. Now they need to see if they can get into Hilltop's territory. Jesse takes the snap, he's gonna throw this one. Here comes the pressure, and Jesse gonna roll out to the left. He's got some room to work with. Here goes T. Jesse, and he is gonna be thrown out of bounds, and only about a gain of about five as Jesse takes a hard tumble into that barrier on the far side of the field. Looks like he's gonna be all right, so it's gonna bring up a second and five as Jesse uses some improvisation to get some yardage. Yeah, and that's the nice thing, and that's T. Jesse improvising, using his legs there, and he's up quickly after he goes hard into the into the post, but he's a tough runner. He can do this with his legs, and he's excited, and as you can see here, right at the end, goes in hard to the fence, but that, nothing gonna put your body on the line. You got nothing left to worry about for tomorrow, so T. Jesse, good run there, getting half the distance to the first down for the Rebels. T. Jesse listed at 6'4", 230. Not many quarterbacks are built like that in this league, and he can rumble with the best of them. Uh, as we're at second and five here. Jesse gonna take the snap, he's gonna throw this. It's a short throw. That is gonna be caught by Cairo Berry, and he just gets to the marker there. It's gonna be a close call as he was tackled right at the line. We'll have to wait and see. We're gonna see where the spot is on this one. It looks like they're putting the, the marker down to set up a third and short but they may come out and measure this as it's on that side of the field. So we're gonna see what they do as they are gonna bring the chains out. Good news is they don't have to go far on that far side of the field, but there's a case Jesse's just trying to get the ball out of his hands into a playmaker's hands in Cairo Berry's. And he's kind of saying to him, help me out, help me out, go get that first down. And Cairo Berry, we'll see if he's able to do that on that play. Just good, good camera work here, as you can see on the far side of the, of the field there. And we'll get that measurement. So it looks, from our eyes, it looks to be, it's obviously very close, but I would say he might be a little bit short, but we'll see what they say here. We're just waiting for the official word from the officials, and it looks like it's gonna be a third and short. Rebels thought they had enough there as they were pointing, but the referees indicated is in fact a little bit short, so I have no doubt Dexter Janky and the Rebels will be in gambling for here. And these types of situations, though, you got to be careful because it's a slippery ball. You, you might see T come under center for the first time today. So you got to be careful here that you don't have a bad snap, which could cause problems. They're doing another quick. Uh, Again, in a game like today, they just want to make sure they set the ball exactly where they want to put it. So that's what they're doing there is just making sure it's set from where they measured it on the far side. So. You can see there, great, great, great view there. So they're very, very close. So that's not inches, that's millimeters. <laughs> so it will be a third and short scenario. And I don't even know if you can call it third and inches. It's third and centimeters. Well, we'll see if the Rebels come under center because Jesse hasn't done that and he doesn't usually do that a whole lot during the game. So we'll see if he does come under center. It looks like he is. So. Quarterback, quarterback to center exchange is key here. If that happens, Rebels should get this first down without a problem. T. Jesse under center. Looks like a QB sneak play to just get a yard. Will they get it? And here goes T. Jesse. He is going right up the side. Does he get there? Ooh. I don't know. That's awfully Ooh. close. We're going to have to wait and see as the Hilltops defense swarms in. 
And this could be a turnover on downs. Fantastic push there by the Saskatoon defense. Well, it all is going to depend on where the mark is. You saw on the previous play, he didn't need a whole lot, and I'm not sure he got a whole lot. And that's an example there, as you can see on the replay, a little too early movement there by the right guard, by the, by the Rebels, but great penetration as you see the gold helmets coming in there, and they're trying to do whatever they can to stop it. Jesse got a little bit of forward progress with his first surge, and then the, then the Hilltops pushed him back. So it all depends on the spot on this one for both teams. So as we do the measure, the rain is just coming down in clumps here and sideways, and it looks like it is a turnover on down. So the Hilltops defense stops the QB sneak on third down, and that means it's going to be Hilltops football near midfield. First, turn, first turnover of the day for the Rebels, and one they didn't expect to get, but that's a fantastic stop by the Hilltop defense on third and very short. And you wonder if T. Jesse maybe hung in under center because it was his first time under center in the game. Wet hands, he might have stayed under center a little long, but I think it was more the, the, the surge of the Hilltop defense that got them the ball back. So Trey Reader and the Hilltops back out, and Boston Davidson getting the ball, and he is just rumbling downfield as he nearly gets a first down all on his own. It's a gain of nine, maybe 10. And we'll have to see where this ball is placed. It's gonna be second down and about a yard. That's or no, they're moving the chains now. Yeah, it's that's a first gonna down. be enough for a first down there as it's really, really windy now as it's picking up, getting worse here. But it's gonna be a long day if the Rebels can't find a stop here for Boston as he is making a lot of yards here, especially on first down. So Rebels need to get their, their, their run defense to stop him. So first and 10, Reader, it's back out to Boston. He is going right up the middle, and Boston Davidson nearly breaks through. He almost fumbles the football, but it's a gain of 25 as Boston Davidson cannot be stopped here in this first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter as the Hilltops and Rebels are at a scoreless standoff at the end of the first quarter. We're going to take a quick break and come right back. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, my name's Harold Skadberg. I am co-owner of Viking Properties, formerly uh, Pacific Coast Land. My name is Jan Egil Gulbranson. I'm a co-owner and partner with Harold in Viking Properties. We're uh, fortunate enough to have Ben um, taking over more and more for us. He's been working with me for probably four or five years now, and the company is in good hands. My name is Ben Galbranson. I'm the president of uh, Pacific Viking Group Properties. So what we try to do is really provide the most square footage uh, possible within people's price range in a very neutral palette so that people can come in and, and make their own mark on their own home. at Starlight Stadium as the first throw of the second quarter was incomplete. As that was a throw to the end zone, hoping for a little bit of magic, but uh, didn't get uh, what he was looking for there as it looked like that was Drake Douglas in the end zone. Yeah, we'll see if things change with the wind here as obviously teams are changed sides, so we'll see if the wind changes there. Surprised that Hilltops threw the ball in the first play in this head in this direction, but maybe that was just to see how the wind is going this way. Look there's, out. There's another loose football, and down goes They're going to call this Charles an incomplete Sawai. pass. Forward pass there. The, Hilltop, or the Hilltops are not happy as they thought there could have been an unnecessary roughness, but I think the Rebels were thinking that was a lateral and a live ball, but it'll be an incomplete pass. So it'll be third down here. As you can see on the replay, it's a forward pass right there. So that'll be an incomplete one, complete pass. So a bit of a break there, but you can see keeping your hands on the ball, keeping your momentum going, it's gonna be a challenge today there. So third down and the Hilltops, I think again, are gonna play field position to bring out their punting. So an unsuccessful drive there for the Hilltops at the end of the day, but they still have a chance to pin the Rebels in here. Cairo Berry back in the end zone to receive this kick. Good snap, lots of time, and this one gonna go right into the end zone. It's gonna be caught by Cairo, so he's gonna run this one out. And he is going to be brought down early. Only about five yards on that, and that is Reese Kack. You'll hear his name a lot on the Hilltops defense. He had a record-breaking game in the CJFL semifinal uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and special teams, especially once the rosters get down here. Now both teams are playing with 40-man rosters. So 
guys on the special teams are going to have to step up. So a lot of guys are doing offensive duty, defensive duty, or special teams. So so it's a lot of reps for guys that are going to have to play a little bit more. And special teams, such a key there. As you, as you can see, good downfield coverage by the Hilltops. Now the Rebels are deep in their own territory. Reese Kack, number 47 of the Hilltops, had six sacks in the CJFL semifinal. That was a league record. As Jesse going to hand this one off to the left to Garen Hardesty, looking for somewhere to go. Makes one nice move and is going to be brought down by the Hilltops after that. It's a gain of about six. And that is going to bring down second and about four. Positive yards there. And, you, and just going back to that punt, Cairo Berry, you can see how po they think points are going to be valuable today as Cairo Berry decided to field that pass. He could have let that bounce as he caught it right around his own goal line. So he decided to try and not give up the point and change the field position. That's a, probably a decision that came in from the bench. So both these teams know they're going to have to scratch a claw and the points are going to be hard to come by there. So Rebels relying on the fact that they can get a couple first downs and they need a big play here on second down. Second and about six as Jesse takes the snap. He's looking to throw. Here comes the pressure and down goes Jesse and that's a sack. The first on the day for the Hilltops and that is Jonathan Stevens and the Rebels going to have to punt this one away deep in their own territory. Yeah, now it's going to be decision time here as Dexter Jenke may have no other decision other than give up a safety as the Rebels are going to be punting and their punter is going to be standing in his own end zone on this play. So this is going to be a tough situation here as you can see the two Hilltop defender or returners, excuse me, are already standing on the Rebel 40 yard line. So I would suspect the Rebels might decide to give up two points. Oh, well, they decide to kick it. So they are going to play here as Chris McClarty gets this one out to about the 45. And here comes Drake Douglas and a good tackle there by the Rebels. Only a few yards to speak of. So great field position here for the Hilltops. Cole Bunting with a nice tackle there for the Rebels as he came down and just tripped up the Hilltop returner. So you can see again another example where in normal circumstances and, and weather conditions, uh, Coach Dexter Jenke may have decided to give up the safety there. But they know they're going to have the points are going to be hard to come by, and he elected to punt that ball. Granted, he had the wind at his back, but that's a you can see how this game is going to play out as we as we move further and further into the day. So Trey Reader taking over near the 45 yard line, and he's going to throw on first down. He is looking deep. He's got his receiver open. It is caught, and it is a touchdown as the Hilltops draw first blood, as that is Noah Flamin with the touchdown reception. And the Saskatoon Hilltops have the first major score of the 2023 Canadian Bowl. First points of the day go to the Saskatoon Hilltops as they take a shot. And they've already, in this quarter alone, I think, thrown the ball as much as they did in the first quarter. So you wonder if the change of fears, if the flipping of the field and the change of directions is going to allow the Hilltops to open up their offense a little bit more. As you can see here, good just straight back drop and throw and, and try and get a quick touchdown. And that's exactly what the Hilltops do. And they draw blood. First blood here at the Canadian Bowl 2023. Extra point is up and good, so tack on another. It is seven nothing Hilltops. And just like we mentioned before, the Rebels familiar territory for them in the last couple games, giving up the first score. And now it's time for T. Jesse and the offense to show that they've got something in the tank today. Yeah, they've got to respond there, and, and that's an example where, again, you think to yourself, if you if you do kick, if you do take a safety and try and tilt the field back in your direction. That play probably doesn't happen because the Hilltops aren't scrimmaging from your 40 or 35 yard line. So, so that, that's the risk you take when you punt the ball on third down, standing on your own goal line, is you might get a, either a return like the, like the Hilltops had, and then bang, it's in the end zone. So risky decision there, and it came back to bite the Rebels, but long way to go, and I'm sure they'll have an answer on offense. Hilltops gonna kick this ball away. It's Hardesty and Barry are the two Rebels returners in the backfield. And this is a shortish kick. Cairo Berry running into this one. It's actually going to be caught by someone else. And not much yardage to speak of. There is a little bit of a miscommunication as Cairo Berry was walking in on it, but uh, wasn't the receiver intended. I think that the Rebels would have wanted to run out that one as Taven Spina, Spina sorry, is the one who returns that football. Very alert play there by Spina as the ball was holding up with that wind on that particular one. The Hilltops are coming down and Spina would look like he was the one that was aware that that's a live ball. So Barry and Hardesty weren't able to get up to, to try and corral that one. Spina did exactly the right thing to do there. Caught the ball, gets what you can. Make sure you hold the ball down when you're tackled and bring your offense on the field. So Jesse in the offense back out on the field, unsuccessful to this point in the game. It's going to be a check down throw and it is caught by CJ Vincent. And that is Matt Wist, the punter slash linebacker, who came in and made the tackle. 
It's a gain of about eight. It's going to bring up second and two. Nice play there by Jesse in the offense on first downs. They like to throw, and you can see Jesse looks out to his right right there, and all that does is it freezes the linebacker. So that's a situation where I think Jesse knows exactly who's going to throw that to C.J. Vincent over the middle as he was kind of coming from left to right. Jesse decides to look out to his right where Cairo Berry was and come back and throw that ball over the middle. So T. Jesse probably knew exactly where he was going to throw that ball. Here comes the pressure, and it's another check down throw, and it is caught. Tristan Ramos Aravallo. That is good enough for a Rebels first down, and they'll move the chains. A little dangerous throw there. Rebels get, get a break there as they throw that one on the inside. The receiver is able to spin, get enough for the first down. As that, that's thrown to the outside of the receiver, there could have been a pretty big collision there as there was a Saskatoon defender coming right in. You just saw him on the, on the, on the end of your screen there because that's a good break for the Rebels. Thrown to the right spot, thrown to the inside. They're able to pick up the first down. Ball spotted just past the 40-yard line. It's first and 10, and here comes Garen Hardesty trying up the middle, but nowhere to go as this Hilltop's defensive line has really st stayed strong so far to this point in the football game. Great job there by the Hilltop front seven, the linebackers, defensive lines. There's an injured Hilltop on the play. There was a late flag on the play, and I think this is going to go against the Rebels as their bench doesn't look to be overly happy. So. I think there, there is a flag. It did come in late on that particular play. So this isn't one of those plays where somebody might have said something or saw did something in a pile or whatever. But I think this could be a penalty going against the Rebels. Yeah, there you go. And you can see that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. So not what you want to do. It'll be a dead ball foul. So it's still going to stay second down. So Hilltop Bench originally thought that was going to be going against them. And then all of a sudden, when head referee Heath Edelson pointed in the direction of the Rebels, they were much happier there. And the replay pretty apparent of what happened there as Hardesty right into the face of that hilltop. You've got to hold your cool in situations like that. I think they're going to be, the hilltops it should be second down as far as I know because it was a dead ball unless they said it happened during the play. So there it is now up to a second down. They just flipped the sticks over. So. Hardesty's got to keep his cool, and he'll be told that, I'm sure, when, when he gets to the Rebel sidelines. So a huge mountain to climb here. Second and 20 for the Rebels as flags fly off the snap. Jesse going to throw. It is caught by Tristan Ramos Aravallo. He's got the first down, but is this play coming back is the question as flags were thrown right away. I think this one is coming back. I think here as it looked like a receiver for the Rebels jumped. That is the call, so costly, costly, two costly penalties is when you convert a second and 25 play as the Rebels just did there, you're thinking to yourself, this is great. We're up in midfield, we're moving. We just had a big conversion. And unfortunately for the Rebels is there's an offside as a receiver on our near side of their field, jumped offside. So instead of second and 25, Rebels going backwards. This is gonna be now second and 30. The Rebels early woes continue here in this Canadian Bowl. And you know, like you said, Tyler, they scored 29 in the third quarter against the Sun. I don't know if this Hilltop's defense is as leaky as that, so they're going to need to figure something out and soon here if they want to be in this football game. And, and I mean, it's the conditions as much as everything today. So I mean, it, I mean, the Sun obviously have a great defense. It's, it's as much a uh, conditions may not allow for 29 points to go against anybody if if they can't get it turned around. So costly penalties. Because I think they're going to just try and get some field position back here. Is that's just a quick dump off? So they're going to try and get something back, but they're going to have to send their punt team out. And good team defense by the Saskatoon Hilltops. Tristan Ramos, Aravallo on the reception again, but not very much positive yardage to speak of. And the Rebels going to punt this one away near their 25-yard line. And that's the worst part is when you're kicking from this far back. Hilltop returners are probably going to be standing right around midfield. So. Rebels need to, we talked about turnovers and how key are there. Penalties like they've just taken the last two on that play are almost like turnovers because you're giving the ball right back to the hilltop. So Rebels got to clean that up. Good kick there as they get the wind to their back. And that's a rocket driving the hilltops back to the 40 yard line. Drake Douglas back on it. Chris McClarty with a great punt. And that is going to back up the hilltops to midfield as the wind is like crosswind right now. You can see it on your screen that is just huge droplets of rain as this game is just nasty in terms of conditions and the Hilltop's gonna take over here midway through the second quarter. It's it's, it's definitely not very pleasant. We're, we gotta cover up here, but to everybody watching at home, it is a windy and the Rebels have played in a game. This reminds me of a game they played 
in a Cullen Cup game against the Raiders about six years ago or something like that, and it was nasty. And and one of the things that, if you talk to the Rebels, there's an unnecessary roughness call against the Hilltops, so that's 15 yards for the Rebels' benefit. But one of the things in that game, and the weather conditions were eerily similar to what we're seeing here, is the punting and the, and the kicking game was so huge. And that could be a real, real important factor here today is whatever kicker decides to have a day and with kicks like that, that could play a massive difference when the weather's like this. So the Hilltops backed up near their own 25-yard line. You see the traveling Hilltops fans who came from Saskatoon probably hoping for better weather than this, but maybe it beats snow. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's they're not used to this, I don't think. There's not much rain like this on the prairies. Here's a throw by Reader. It's Drake Douglas on the across play, but three Rebels are right there to stop the play as I don't know if he even got back to the line of scrimmage there. If, if he did, it's a short gain, so it's going to be second and long here for it, the Hilltops. Yeah, minimal gain there by the Hilltops as they just try and swing it out to their playmakers, hoping he can make somebody miss, make a big play. Good defense there by the Rebels. As you can see, they flow really well. They're out there fast. There's a host of red jerseys, so they got about two or so on that play, and find the Hilltops. I'm going back to Boston Davidson as he's, he's had a heck of a first start, a start to this game even though we're only a quarter and six minutes into it. Second and about seven, and Boston Davidson is going to be brought down as Cody McMahon in on the tackle, and that is a big play for this Rebels defense, and now the Hilltops going to have to punt this ball away. McMahon with a big play by the Rebel defense there as he didn't let Davidson get going. As you can see him come right in and just, just get a feed him right there, and now he's down. So great job there by Cody McMahon, not allowing a really talented and hard running back like Davidson to get his momentum going. Because if he gets into the second level, he's a tough guy to bring down. So good tackle there. Now, that, now real quick, it's the Hilltops kicking deep in their territory. Matt Wist, good snap and a good kick at that. As Cairo Berry looking at this one, he's gonna catch it in the air. So here goes Cairo Berry, the top punt returner in the BCFC. He's looking for something down the right sideline, but he is gonna be thrown out of bounds as it's only about a five yard gain and it looks like there is an unnecessary roughness flag coming the Rebels way and gotta stay disciplined and those in the are, biggest game of the year. Yeah, and, then, then, and those are ones, I mean, you saw exactly what I saw in that one too. And the Rebels are gonna get good field position right after the Cairo Berry return there. It wasn't for huge yardage, but they were sitting there going, we're at the 45 yard line or so. Now they're gonna be marching back as somebody decided to take a shot at somebody down the field and that's gonna be a penalty that the Rebels are not gonna be happy, but they've got nobody to blame but themselves on that one as that was definitely a penalty against them. The sun's starting to peek through here. Hopefully a clear in the rain is coming up because I don't know about you, Tyler, my feet are soaked right now. I was just gonna say the same thing. We got our runners on here and the floor, we're covered in a tent and I'm like, we're not getting drenched on inside, but somehow the, my feet, I feel like I'm standing in three inches of water with no shoes on. So. Definitely going to have to change the socks here after this game. The sideways rain coming in, the sun peeking out, hopefully means better conditions here. And hopefully means for the Rebels, they can move the ball downfield as they're going to start at their own 45-yard line. Jesse going to throw on first down, and it is incomplete oh. as C.J. Vincent contorted his body to try and make the catch but couldn't quite get it. It's going to be second and ten. And that was a throw. I mean, that one kind of looked like it somewhat slipped out of Jesse's hand on that one as does look like the sun is trying to peek out, but that's a play there where CJ Vincent, excuse me, was just trying to contort his body there, and he almost did exactly that and made an unbelievable catch there for the Rebels, which would have moved the stick. So that was just a little bit behind them, but Vincent, Vincent is so talented, he almost still came down with that one for the Rebels. Looking at eight minutes remaining in this first half, the Rebels still don't have much to speak of on offense, looking to change the narrative here. As Jesse going to probably need to throw this on second down. Gets his receivers in motion. Here comes the pressure. Jesse's going to scramble out of the pocket. Going to go for it himself. And he is going to get player. there on the dive as T. Jesse, calling his own number, moves the chains on a great QB scramble. That is why you win Offensive Player of the Year in the country. It plays exactly like that where T. Jesse is just giving himself up vulnerably his body. As you can see, he, he knows exactly where the yardstick's on that one. And once he breaks through the first level, he could probably look to his right, just glance out at it, and he goes, I got to go up and over. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to move the sticks for my team. First and 10 into Hilltop's territory. They haven't done that much today at the 50-yard line. 
Jesse's going to throw this ball. It is caught by Zion Brown, and not much further to go there. Gain of about five as Zion Brown gets his first reception of the day, and that's going to make it second and five. And Zion Brown's going to be a guy that they're, they're going to have to count on because they're going to find need to find ways to get the ball in other people's hands other than Cairo Berry and C.J. Vincent and the two talented backs. So look for Zion Brown as he's going to have to make some plays today. He made one there, caught a big catch, and he's been working his way back from injury as he suffered earlier in the season. So hopefully for him, he's going to come and make some big plays at the right time. There's second and five. Jesse looking downfield again. He's going to scramble again, and he is going to uh, maybe close. get there. It's a close call again at the yardage marker as Reese Kak was coming in with some pressure. And Jesse calls his own number again, and that is going to move the chain. So T. Jesse successful once again, and it's another Rebels first down. And you can see T's got some decent time here as the talented Hilltop defenders are closing in on him. And once he realizes he doesn't have an option to throw to because the Hilltops had it all covered at the back end, used his legs, got what he can. And once again, you can see the size and athleticism of T. Jesse as if he isn't able to get that first down. The Rebels are going to be punched. So big, big, big play there by the Rebels quarterback. At the Hilltops 40, Rebels keep marching. And now it's a loose football, and Jesse's just going to have to dive on it as that is probably uh, props to the weather conditions here as Jesse just can't hold on to that football, and that's a loss of about five. So now the Rebels going to need a big play here. Yeah, you can see if we on the replay here, the snap is, is not that bad, but what happens is, is it's just your hands get so wet and you're trying to look downfield, and... For those that haven't played quarterback, it's a hard thing to do to, number one, keep your hands dry in situations like this. But you've got to read what the defense is doing, read what your your, your receivers are doing. And in that case, Jesse maybe just had his eyes downfield, but smart play by just jumping on that ball. Empty backfield here as the Rebels need some big yardage. There's a flag down as C.J. Vincent on the check down throw is not nearly going to get enough yardage, but we'll have to wait and see where these penalties come down to as right on the snap. Legs flew from both sides of the field, so looks like an offside, but against two, we'll think, wait and find out. I'm thinking it's going to be the Rebels for receiver on that one, and it is, as they look to have jumped on our near side, on the four receiver side, to the near side of our broadcast booth. So Hilltops are going to decline this one, I'm assuming, as it would bring up a third down for for the Rebels. So I'm assuming, unless they're worrying about field position, the Rebels maybe taking a shot at kicking a field goal. Geo Lyonuzzi could kick the ball, but. Number I'm assuming four, the Hilltops are going to decline it as they do, force third the Rebels down. into a third down situation. Now we'll see if Dexter Jenke decides to send. It looks he's like he is going to send his punt team out. So he now is going to do what Coach Sarger was doing earlier, and that's play field position and try and hem the Hilltops deep in their own territory. Five minutes left to go in this first half. It's been a fast-moving football game. We kicked off at about 3.15. It's just inching towards 4 o'clock now. So this is a fast-paced football game to this point. And Chris McClarty going to boot this one right up the middle. And Charles Sawai having some trouble with it. A great punt here by the Rebels. And not a lot of room to go as that one is going to be down near the goal line. So the Hilltops really going to have to work here to get out of deep in their territory. Sawai so slipping on that one definitely cost the Hilltops as, as, his, as his returning partner there. And we'll see him catch it on the replay. Had to come over and kind of help him out once he realized his buddy slipped. And you see it right there as, as, the, as the other Hilltop Number looks like number, is it 26 or 86? 86 on that play. He's able to come over and help his buddy out, but good downfield coverage there by the Rebels. And now the Hilltops are gonna desperately need to get a couple first downs here, or they're gonna have decision time as far as punt or, or give up a safety as they, as they begin this drive. Ball spotted just past the three yard marker. Trey Reader in his own end zone, gonna have to throw this one out, and here he goes. It's a deep route play, and it is incomplete as going for the reception, that is Noah Flamin. He caught the touchdown pass earlier in this quarter, but this time he can't come down with it, and now it's second and long. Yeah, that one just kind of hung up, and, and for those at home, they might be thinking, why is there two Hilltop players in the same area? And I think that's the case of the ball just hanging up as the Hilltops are going into this breeze now, and that one fell right in between the two Hilltop receivers, so this is a massive, massive play as you know the Rebels are thinking, okay, if we can get a stop here and incomplete pass, Chances are the Saskatoon Hilltops are going to be giving up a safety. So massive play here early on second down. Trey Reader taking the snap. He's looking to throw again. He's got a receiver near the place. Wow. It's caught. It's Noah Flamin. He's got room to go. And he is going to be brought down near midfield as Noah Flamin breaking through the Rebels defense. We're not prepared for a big throw. 
and you can see the Hilltops fans, they are fired up and they are in control of this football game, and it is a huge Hilltops first down. What a catch there by Flamage. You can see he has to make, this is not an easy catch. You can see he turns back and just was able to reach up and, and snare that one. That is a really, really talented catch by Flamin, and it comes at the perfect time for his Hilltop offense as they're now getting close to midfield themselves. Oh, risky snap there as Reeder wasn't even ready for it, but luckily, Boston Davidson taking the handoff gets them a couple. That could have been a disastrous snap there. Could have totally been disastrous for the Hilltops as there was a bit of a bobble on that one, and that's going to be the theme of the day is who could protect the ball the best, who can limit their mistakes, who can limit the, their opportunities for the other team to make big plays. That's going to be obviously it sounds, it sounds like a simple, simple concept, but that's going to be deciding who's going to walk out of here with the Canadian ball. And in that case, the Hilltops did a good job to make sure they didn't turn it over to the Rebels. So three minutes remaining, second and 10. Rebels looking for another stop, empty backfield. Reader's gonna throw this, and Drake Douglas on the reception, on the screen pass, is not gonna get there, as that is a big stop there by the Rebels defense, and that is gonna bring up a third down situation, as that's uh, Oluwu Faranmi Akinlola making the tackle, and it's third and five. Third and five here, decision time for Coach Sargent, as we're at the three minute warning. So he'll have a couple extra seconds to decide what he wants to do on this one. Hilltops are right around midfield. They need about four yards. I'm assuming he's going to send out his punt team begrudgingly, as I'm sure he'd love to keep his offense on the field and go for this. But that's a play there where you can see they're just trying to get the ball out into Douglas's hands, have him hopefully be able to make a couple of Rebel players miss on get enough for the first down. But Rebels which, with a good job on defense, make the tackle, forcing the Hilltops to send out their punt team. The Hilltop's going to punt this ball away. They're near midfield here. Uh, it's just Cairo Berry back for the Rebels. If you're ever going to see a fake, this might be one where, in a place where you might take a shot. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be a kick as Wiss kicks this one sky high. Watch the punter, watch the punter. And now Cairo Berry picks up the ball. He's going to go out to his left looking for any room to work with and he is somehow still on his feet but finally brought down near the 35 yard line as the Rebels will take this ball over with two minutes and 26 seconds so time is of the essence here for the Rebels to get some points before the end of the half. And that's a play where it doesn't seem like it's a, 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 a real significant play in this game but that ball bounced once it hit the ground that ball bounced towards Cairo Berry and towards the Rebels end zone. If that bounces back the Rebels the, the Hilltop punter made a great decision he was flying down the field. If that bounces back towards the Hilltops side of the field, that could have easily been a recovery for the Hilltops in a first down. So a little play like that, in that case, the bounce went the hit Rebel away. T. Jesse on first down. He's gonna throw this one. It is caught by Zion Brown, but right in on the tackle, that is Wist again. It's only a gain of about four, maybe five, so second and five here for the Rebels. Positive yards there on first down. Another catch to Zion Brown as he just curls up. Hilltop's really doing a good job today on defense, and you can see how why their defense is so good, one of the stingiest in the, in the country this year. I think somebody said last night it averaged six points a game in a game, so per average. So you can see it here as the Hilltop's team defense has been exceptional here in the first half. So second and five, Jesse looking and he's gonna call his own number here. Back up the middle, T. Jesse with a nice move and another big run by T. Jesse calling his own number and moving the chains for another Rebels first down. And you know what, that's one of the plays that Jesse's doing with his legs here in this second quarter. And when you watch T. Jesse, we have had the luxury of doing that for the last couple of years, is you always think of what he could do with his arm. And we've seen it so often. I'm sure the Hilltops watch a ton of film and they may not understand what this guy could also do with his legs. And you saw it right there. That's a massive play, and Jesse's used his legs a couple times to pick up some big first downs for the Rebels. Near midfield, another first down for West Shore. They're going to throw downfield, and it is going to be intercepted as it was deflected near Tristan Ramos Aravallo, and that is Wist once again. He's been all over the football field as Matt Wist gets the interception and stops the Rebels offense in its tracks late in the second quarter. Turnovers, we said, are gonna be huge. That's when the Hilltops get in their direction as this ball kind of sails on T. You can see it's overthrown. He's trying to fit that within four jersey, four white jerseys there. That would have been a really, really tough throw because if he underthrows that one, it's gonna be intercepted. And it sailed off the deflection. The Hilltops get a turnover. Now they have an opportunity here before the half. 
Trey Reader looking to throw this one. It's another screen play. It's going to be caught by Drake Douglas. And a good job by Bronson Pfeiffer to get over and make the tackle. It's a gain of about four. And that's going to bring up second and six, 128 remaining in the first half. Both teams have both their timeouts, so we'll see how aggressive the Hilltops want to be. Good tackle there by Pfeiffer, as you can tell. He catches that one, or excuse me, the, the, the Hilltop caught that one. He's standing there going, I'm on an island. i got to make this tackle because it would take a couple seconds for the, the rest of his buddies, the cavalry, to arrive. So good tackle there by Pfeiffer as he just holds on to Douglas, bringing up second and about five for the Hilltops. Reader calling the shots. It's going to be a play action pass, and that is going to be caught as Noah Flamin with another big reception and the play action working to perfection again for the Hilltops. Love the call there on second and five by Saskatoon. And that's his, that's the beauty of having it. You can see a little play action fake right there. And the, that, what that does is that holds up the, the, the Rebels linebackers as they have to respect Boston Davis. And all of a sudden that creates a little bit of an opening for Flamigan to be able to sit right down in that seam and get a big first down for the Hilltops. Here's a first down. It's Boston Davidson on the ground. And a good job there by Ferranmi Ock and Lola to get the tackle. Gain of about four. That's going to bring up second and six. Good gain there on first down. Another run, good run by Davidson as he's been electric here in this first half. I suspect they might, they can have a couple options here on second down as we're just approaching the minute mark here. Again, both teams have both their timeouts. Lots of time here if you're the Hilltops as they get into Rebel territory. So we'll see what they do. They can come back to a play action pass. It seems to be working and that's, this is the down and distance they've had success with it. Reader takes the snap. It's got another handoff to Davidson, and he is going to be stopped short. So a good job by the Rebels' defense. It's going to be third and about one as Davidson gets the handoff again, but can't quite get to the yardage marker, so it's a third and short situation. I'm thinking here, we'll see what the Hilltops do. I'm thinking they're going for this. This is right around where the Rebels went for it before they got stuffed on third down. They may take their time. They've got two timeouts. I wouldn't be surprised if they want to just take a breath here, see what they've got and maybe think about this one on second down. So we'll see We'll see if they're just gonna run this clock down, burn a timeout, see what happens here, as they may elect to just take some time. As you see the clock running on your screen as we're getting down to 25 seconds remaining on the game clock, and there is the timeout called by the Hilltops and a flag being thrown, so did they maybe not get that off in time? Well, usually they know, and the Hilltops are looking up at the, at the score clock to know when that was blown in, so they were probably elected to do it. There was a flag that came down. If that is a delay of game, that'll also be a loss of down in the last three minutes. So I'm a little surprised to see that flag. I'm not sure if that will be picked up or not, as I think the Hilltops would be going irate if that's a delay of game against them. So we're going to see what they call here. As they may elect to just, if they if they don't, if it is a loss of down, I mean, now all of a sudden, or excuse me, on third down, it'll just be a 10-yard penalty, so it doesn't really matter. So they, that'll be on the, that'll be the case. So we'll see what happens here as the, as the referees come together. Figure that out. And something else I've noticed is that Trey Reader, the quarterback, has the built-in microphones in the ears. We haven't seen that at all. It's been outlawed kind of in the in the uh, BCFC. So why is that used in the final game? It's a, it's a CJFL rule. It's one of those things. Our, our teams have the option of using it even if they don't. They Some of our teams use a a wrist coach uh, technology to send plays in. So it's certainly an option for our teams to use. Uh, we were the first ones at BC to use that wrist, wrist coach, but as technology changes, we have to adapt to the time, so. So there's no flag on that play, so the flag was picked up here. So third down here, massive play here. So third and one. Reader not under center here. He's got Davidson in the backfield, and it's going to be a throw. It's going to be a deep throw, and it is incomplete as Noah Flamin had daylight ahead, but unfortunately the throw was inches off, and it is a turnover on downs. The Rebels will take over with 20 seconds at their own 45. You know, you know what? I mean, I love the call there by the Hilltops with just a, with 20, low 20, 21 seconds left in the half. If you hit that, I think everybody in the park probably thought that ball was going to be handed off to Boston Davidson on that play. So I like the shot. I like the fact that Coach Sargent said, you know what, I'm not afraid to turn the ball over if it's incomplete. And because he knows what a defense he has there. But if they're able to connect with that one, they're going to maybe get seven, but for sure three points. So everybody in the park probably thought that was going to Boston Davidson on third down. T. Jesse back out on the field. The Rebels looking to see if they can get one quick last bit of points in here as Jesse's going to look deep downfield, and that is going to be caught by Tristan Ramos Aravallo and only a gain of about 15 there, so that's going to bring it in the Hilltops territory. 
15 seconds left on the clock. The Rebels have two timeouts left to use here to stop the clock. Another penalty, costly, costly penalty against the Rebels as they were offside again at receiver. And how many times? That's probably been the third or fourth time in this first half. So costly penalty as they could have used a timeout. They were in Hilltop territory, could have taken a shot to the end zone, maybe had two plays left. Now all of a sudden you're having to go back five yards to do it all over again. And that's something you never know if it's nerves in a game like this or what it is or just the over anxiousness, but costly penalty for the Rebels there. Now it'll be first to 15. They lose about 10 seconds on the clock as well as 15 seconds now remain in this first half. Jesse takes a snap. He's gonna throw it downfield. It is incomplete as CJ Vincent went up for it and in on the tackle for the Hilltops making the play. That is Wade Keating as he makes a big hit in the middle of the field and CJ Vincent a little limber getting up and he's gonna be a huge part of this Rebels team if they're gonna get back in this game. Yeah, Vincent took a big shot there. As you can see, Keating and, and, the, and the Saskatoon Hilltop are really loose in the back end. Their, their secondary is way back here on, as they know, they just have to play sound defense here and the Rebels can't get that, anything deep over their heads. So that's where that enabled a shot like that to happen. And I wouldn't be surprised here with, with, with just 10 and a half seconds or so on the clock that the Rebels may just hand this one off, get to the locker room and hit the regroup button. 10.7 on the clock here, second and 15. Jesse taking the snap, here comes the pressure and flags flying all over the place as Jesse trying to go himself, not gonna get back to the line of scrimmage. He's gained of about five maybe. And we're gonna see where these penalties fall. In the neighborhood and direction, two of them came out of holding against the Rebels, so I suspect I mean, the Hilltops could either take this and move them 10 yards back or bring a third down. Either or is a, is a good option for them. So I suspect it's probably going to either be a block below the waist or an unnecessary route or face mask against the Rebels. So in that direction, hands to the face. So What's that? we'll see what happens. They're going to take this penalty, I'm assuming, just push them back. Them back. But this it? should be the final play of this. You are? Deployed? They want to take What's them that? back as they get the directions from the bench here. Line of scrimmage 15. So you are? But a costly penalties by the Rebels here is they weren't going to get anything out of that drive in terms of points, but they just got to stop the penalties, stop these penalties here Against late in the, the second quarter. Roughness, heads to the face, Rebels, 15-yard penalty, repeat second down. Should so be the last play of the first half here, barring another penalty. So, I mean, if you're the Hilltops, I mean, mission complete in the first half. You held the best offense in the BCFC to zero points. Uh, if you're the Rebels, what do you think the messaging is going to be? Message is going to be exactly like, I mean, if I'm Dexter Janke and, and I talked to him after the game again when they played the Okanagan Sun when they were down at the half in that game, and I think they had four points or something at the half, is you're going into that half and saying, I mean, people thought, you, know, you don't, I mean, the days of throwing garbage cans and getting all upset and yelling at people, those days are gone, and Dexter's a pretty cool customer. And you just go into your dressing room and say, guys, there's a reason why we were undefeated this year. There's a reason why we have all Canadians on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. There's a reason why we could score points. We did it against the Okanagan Sun for 29. And there's no panic, I, and I think that's the key to their game. They came out, they're the home team, they're, they got the nerves with the big crowd on their side. There's positives that they could say, certainly take from this. Obviously, the Hilltops are looking at it and saying, you know, we pitched a shutout. Our defense is one of the best in the country, as we mentioned. So that's what the message is there going to be. But for the Rebels, there's no panic in their game. They have too many weapons, and I'm sure they'll come out and play a good second half. As we mentioned, the CJFL Awards handed out last night at a gala. T. Jesse, the Offensive Player of the Year in Canada. Co coach Dexter Jenke, the Coach of the Year in Canada. And we also got to give a shout out to Paul Short, who's on the field, also recognized for his long body of work uh, for junior football in Canada as well. So no all three question. guys, well deserved. No question there. And all the award winners, congratulations. But yeah, the Rebels had a good night with Dexter Jenke coming in, first year head coach. Done an amazing job with this Rebel program. With the support of the rest of the coaching staff and the organizations, they're just going to take a knee here on second down. But to, to Paul Short, and he's 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 revered in the in the CJFL and certainly the BCFC as well. Totally deserving. One of my favorite people. One of everybody's favorite people. So, congratulations to Paul, his lovely wife Karen, obviously the family. You couldn't have a more deserving award winner for the Ed Hennick, which is the CJFL's most prestigious award. Than Mr. Short, and he's 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 one of the one of the real good guys in the sport, and everybody loves him. So that is the whistle to end our first half of the 2023 Canadian Bowl. The Saskatoon Hilltops come into enemy territory and hold the Rebels offense to zero points. They get a solo touchdown from Noah Flamin and take a 7-0 lead into the locker room at the halftime break. Andy Neal will join you with CJFL Jim Pankovich. 
and Paul Short as well in our halftime show. Don't go anywhere. It's been an exciting half of football, and we've still got half to go. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Skadberg. I am co-owner of Viking Properties, formerly uh, Pacific Coast Land. My name is Jan Egil Gulbranson. I'm a co-owner and partner with Harold in Viking Properties. We're uh, fortunate enough to have Ben um, taking over more and more for us. He's been working with me for probably four or five years now and the uh, company is in good hands. My name is Ben Galbranson. I'm the president of uh, Pacific Viking Group Properties. So what we try to do is really provide the most square footage uh, possible within people's price range in a very neutral palette so that people can come in and, and make their own mark on their own home. We're all looking for it. A place to reignite your soul and to awaken your inner child. To leave feeling awestruck, not because of the destination, but because of the journey itself. Take a deep breath and smell the freshness of the air. Listen to nature's music. Look out onto the vast horizon. Indulge in locally foraged food. Feel the warmth of the sun and the coolness of the ocean. Let your senses come alive. The 115th Canadian Bowl is a defensive struggle so far at Starlight Stadium in Langford, B.C. on Vancouver Island. Welcome back. I'm Andy Neal alongside Jim Pankovich, the commissioner of the Canadian Junior Football League. And this had to be exciting because these were the two best teams in the CJFL all season and a showcase of the two best playing for the national title. How exciting was that to be able to get these two matched up here on the island? Oh, wonderful. You know, both of these teams had outstanding offenses all season. Uh, but as uh, someone said, lately defenses can win you championships, so both of them had good defenses as well. And, you know, it was a tough road for, uh, for the teams to get here. You know, we had three conference champions, West Shore in BC, uh, Hilltops in the Prairies, and St. Clair uh, in uh, Ontario. And uh, nice to see the, the crowd here today, and nice to see a championship game being played. I'm always amazed whenever I see, I'm from Saskatchewan, <laughs> and whenever a Saskatchewan team's on the road, they always get a good crowd, but everything seems right in the world when the Saskatoon Hilltops are among the best in the CJFL. What about that program and how it just continues to have success? Yeah, you know, they, they have a good program. They have right from the top down, from the, the, the administrators to the coaches to the players. They're very committed to success every season, and it shows on the field. And uh, like West Shore, you know, they're, they're committed to actually winning a championship. This is a 7-0 Saskatoon Hilltops lead over the Rebels through the half. You know, the Rebels, last time they were here was 2016. They lost to the Hilltops in that game. But how about the program? Dexter Jenkins in his first year as head coach. And what does it mean to have the island success? VI Raiders were so good for so long uh, early on after the uh, turn of the century. But now to have the Rebels uh, where they're at, uh, what's that like for the BCFC to have the Rebels doing as well as they did? Well, Wester had a tremendous season. They've gone undefeated so far. Yeah. Uh, coach Jenkins was a the Canadian Junior Football League Coach of the Year, 
and uh, you know they've, they've had a tremendous success a number of years. It's nice to see them in the championship game this year representing the BC Conference. It's got to be neat with the coach. I mean, Tom Sargent's been at it for so long for the Hilltops, and as you mentioned, Dexter Janke in his first year. Where's coaching at uh, in the CJFL? you got some old voices and some <laughs> new ones. It, it's nice to see that mix. Uh, you know, Tom Sargent has been an outstanding coach for a long period of time in the Canadian Junior Football League. And, uh, you know, he's on uh, one of the ones that's more veteran, but we've got some young coaches right across the league that are doing very well. Uh, bodes well for the future of the Canadian Junior Football League. As far as the uh, CJFL, what are some things to get excited about uh, this year and moving forward? Uh, so this year we had 19 teams playing across the country. We've had continued interest in new franchises, particularly in Ontario. So I think over the next couple of years we'll be able to add some additional teams. But I think just the increased competitive level amongst all of the teams right across the country, producing good players, not only on the field, but in the community. The amount of work our teams do in the community is actually uh, nice to see and, and we reward that with our awards. How important would that be in Ontario? Because it's such a big population there, obviously, but to, to be able to have that interest and be able to grow it there. Oh, it is, particularly in the smaller communities. I think that's where really where our Canadian Junior Football League teams thrive, is in the smaller communities where they can have a large presence there and produce, you know, good both on the field and off the field success. I want to get your uh, take on today's <laughs> game. It's been a defensive struggle. These teams both are great on both sides of the ball, but what have you made of a 7 nothing game so far? <laughs> I was, well, I was expecting both these teams had really good offenses, so I was expecting a little bit more offense, uh, but the defensive struggle is great for the fans. You can tell, you can hear the fans in the background cheering <laughs> and for every hit and every play, so it's exciting football to watch. You know, this game is getting covered, uh, Telesoptic and BCFC TV. Uh, what about the coverage of uh, Canadian junior football and being able to get it into homes. It's wonderful to be able to, with the live streaming now, we can control getting our game out there and with the broadcast quality being very high, it's nice to see the, the increased uptake of our game right across the country. Well, you mentioned the crowd, uh, the, the enthusiasm in this building. Uh, how nice is it to see the crowd the way it is today? Well, I, as I was standing out front earlier watching them just stream in and, and <laughs> so, some of the people I, I've met before and a lot of young people, the community football here supporting uh, the, 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 the cause with the Rebels and nice to be able to see the, the crowd that's in the background here at this national championship game. The recruitment for junior football teams, uh, how's that process and, and what teams are doing to be able to get the players to play in uh, in their respective conferences? Yeah, so most of the teams come from our local communities. The minor football is a very important part of actually feeding into the Canadian Junior Football League, but there's also players here playing with the Rebels and playing with the Hilltops that come from across the country. And we actually even have some international players that are playing with some of our teams. They come from Great Britain, Australia, Denmark, uh, Sweden. So it's a nice mix of, of the local flavor of the community, plus also some international mix. How are you able to get those international <laughs> players? What, what's the message to them? A lot of it's word of mouth, uh, getting the word out there on the internet. A lot of people see the games, whether it be live streaming or hear about them, and then they'll just contact the teams. And, and we've got a little bit more of an active outreach program going on now, uh, but I think just the, the ability to come here and enjoy uh, Canadian football and to participate in Canadian football is really the draw for some of the players. Well, Jim, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for doing this. We're all trying to stay warm, so good luck with that. But uh, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Jim Pankovic, the commissioner of the Canadian Junior Football League. Halftime music, a championship game, you know it has to have it. Here's Born Reckless. I'm John Bond. I'm James Thompson. We're the Born Reckless Band, and this is one of our new songs, Living, Love, and Freedom. Yeah. 
just living, loving freedom. Well, it's too damn easy getting stuck around here where the days turn to weeks and the months turn to years. Yesterday's fading in our rearview mirror and the stars keep on shining while we're sipping on. on through all this hometown dreaming I got the rhymes now I got a reason Ooh, it's a real fine line between loving and leaving let's bust on through all this hometown dreaming I got the rhymes now I got a reason oh ooh, it's just living love and free I said, oh, it's just living, loving, freedom. Good stuff from Born Reckless and uh, great music today. Please be joined. Paul Short, who's the Deputy Commissioner of the Canadian Junior Football League, one-time coach of the Rebels, you yep. said many moons ago, but still mm -hmm. you had uh, your role on the sideline. What do you make of that opening half? Uh, two great teams struggling it out in the 7 nothing game. Oh, yeah, I thought it was a good first half. You know, the weather conditions, obviously, and both teams feeling each other out. Um, and they are the two best defenses in the country, so you're going to have this type of game. But I thought it would be a bit more offense. But again, the weather conditions, I think, dictated that. What do you think? The Rebels had a couple of uh, undisciplined penalties, uh, flags, and maybe took a little bit of momentum away from them. How much do you think that needs to be stressed as far as staying away from penalties and especially discipline? Well, it's huge. Um, the Rebels have had that tendency throughout the year to take on some time, untimely penalties. That hurt them, but they were so dominant that it didn't really affect them. But now they're in a game that the team they're playing against is pretty good, and uh, those type of penalties do come back to haunt you at some point. But they, I, you know, Coach Dexter's going to take him in the change room. He's going to ex express the importance of us just be disciplined and go and play and do play rebel football. Yeah, the Saskatoon Hilltops, eight of their 12 games, they held their opponent to less than 10 points, and they've so far done that against the Rebels here today. What impresses you about what their defense brings to the table against an offense? Uh, discipline. They are one of the most disciplined teams I've ever seen, mm. uh, and, and they they believe in themselves and they rally to the football. I think they, they, I think they must have a contest during practice. <laughs> who's going to be the first to the, make the tackle? Right. Because they, they hustle and they get after it. Boston Davidson uh, for the Hilltops, running the ball well. Uh, Garen Hardesty for the uh, Rebels, too, yes. has been back and forth. Uh, what do you think about how the Brown game has sort of set up the pass in this game for both sides? Well, I... It, T. Jesse, being the Rebels quarterback, loves to throw the football. But when you look at the way they play the game, it's a run game that sets it up. And the Hilltops have always been a running team. Mm -hmm. And it, they just they dominate the line of scrimmage, and they just basically run. Let's run, run, and pound it, pound it, pound it. And then they throw in some passes. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of surprised how much they've thrown this in this game so far. Well, thanks to Paul Shore. Thanks for doing this, Paul. Let's oh, go back welcome. upstairs. The men calling it Tyler Bennett and Tyler McMahon. Thank you, Andy, and as you can see, we are back 
for second half coverage and Cairo Berry is gonna Look take out. this down Look the sidelines on the first play of the Here second half. Go. Here come the West Shore Rebels. And what a return and a break for the West Shore Rebels is that is a way to electrify a massive crowd here at Starlight as Cairo Berry does what he's done all season long for the Rebels and he brings the crowd to their feet here on the opening kickoff of this second half. And that's the danger when you kick to a guy like Cairo Berry and with one play, one strike, this game is gonna be knotted up at seven after the extra point. Cairo Berry bobbled the ball to start with, even gave the Hilltops fans something to look at as he went down the sideline. And we have a, well, not quite yet, wait for the extra point, but we could have a tie football game here. No question about it. And that's what Cairo Berry had high snap there. So that wasn't as automatic and I guess in conditions like this today, nothing is a guarantee, but that will not the score up at 7-7 as Lyonuzzi was able to add the extra point. And Cairo Berry, in, in games like these, you need your guys, your big play players. And both these teams have a lot of them. You need their, those guys to make plays. And Cairo Berry, and, and that kickoff, I, for when I first saw it, we're watching it, came back out of the break. I'm looking, going, this could be a massive problem for the Rebels as the ball hung up there. The Hilltops are coming down. And out of nowhere, Cairo Berry, picks it up and before you know it, he's in the end zone for his Rebels, tying this score up. And I thought that was gonna be a real bad play for the Rebels. Turned out to be a electrifying one, which brought the house down here at Starlight. So a jolt of energy from Starlight Stadium as Cairo Berry goes to the house on the first play of the second half. And we have a brand new football game just 13 seconds in. Electrifying start and I feel bad for those that were in the concession stands getting a beer or a hot dog is they missed a really really big play by a fantastic player and before I know you know it it's tied up and now the Hilltops I was just gonna say the Rebels get a good start with the ball to start the second half now it's essentially gonna be the Hilltops are gonna have the first possession of the second half of the Canadian Bowl. Gio Lanuzzi kicking this one deep in the Hilltops territory Charles Sawai gonna return this and he is gonna be brought down by Joey Riom who has been a special teams specialist all season for the Rebels, another big tackle there. And the Hilltops are gonna start near their own 25 yard line. Yeah, guys like Joey Riom have been huge for the Rebels and on special teams. And they say, coaches will always stress the point, special teams are a third of the game. And deep down they're really thinking they're actually more than that as far as how important they are. Dexter Jenke, good special teams coordinator for the Rebels. He knows the importance and now the Hilltops will look to respond after the early touchdown by the Rebels. Trey Reeder under center, and he's going to look to throw this. He scrambles to his right. Cody McMahon is right there, and Reeder is just going to run out of bounds. Gain of about four, maybe five, and that's going to bring up second and six as Charles Sawai on the sideline. We have a good shot right there as he was really injured on that return. We'll have to keep an eye on him to see if he's available in the ball game as he was one of the top ranked CJFL players coming into this season. Yeah, fantastic player in the, in the Hilltops. will definitely need him here in the second half as the fans get really loud here. Good run there by Reeder though. As he, for the first time, he kind of shows his legs on that play. Only gets a yard or two, but positive yards here on first down for the Hilltops. Reeder gonna need to throw this ball and here comes the pressure, it's another Deep ball, and it is going to be incomplete as Noah Flamin, who seems to be the number one receiver today for the Hilltops, couldn't get by James Hoyt, the fifth year player of the Rebels. And that is going to bring up third down, and here comes the rain once again. I thought at the half it was going to maybe get a little nicer here for the second half, but lo and behold, as soon as, as, soon as we're getting going, it gets a really windy here. So the wind is howling here at Starlight, and the Rebels get their defense off the field. So. Guess who's back standing around at the 55 yard line for the Rebels, so we'll see what he can do here on this punt return. As that's gonna be Wist punting this ball away for the Hilltops. And Cairo Berry is gonna go right up the middle. There's a flag on the play. It looks like it's gonna be against the Rebels. Uh, as this, Cairo this Berry be, gets about 10 yards on the return. This is probably gonna be a no yards here, I think, against the Hilltops. If I, we'll see what happens. I could be wrong, but I think this might be, because uh, Cairo came up to catch that one in the air, because. I think he knew there was going to be a hilltop trap within the territory, but you and I are up here in the broadcast booth. We're not down there in the stripes, so we'll see what they call here on this one. And Cairo got a good return on that one, so the penalty, if it is what I think it might be, Tyler and I are having a 50 cent bet here to see who's right. It is an no yards against the hilltop, so it'll be a 15 yard penalty. Cairo's return no was yards. almost at the same and length 20 as far as what the, the return would have been. So the penalty's not going to be as damning for the hilltops 
but you can see where as he marks this one off exactly where the, the Rebels are going to be starting this drive. And Cairo Berry here, and he's a he's a graduated player. He's probably went in the locker room and say, "Boys, get on my back here. We're gonna we're gonna get this one here and try and bring it home for the team in red." The parallels between this game and the Cullen Cup final against the Okanagan Sun are scarily familiar here. Let's see if the narrative keeps up as T. Jesse starting in great field position here. The Rebels looking to tack on another score. Jesse's going to throw this ball. It's a check down throw to Cairo Berry. He's got it, and he's got a few extra yards to gain as that's close to a first down. We'll wait and see, and it looks like he is going to move the chains. It's a gain of 10 and a Rebels first down. Rebels first down here as they're now marching into, into into scoring territory with potential of at least three here on this opening drive for them outside of the touchdown return here for the Rebels on offense. So going back to Barry and he's been making plays all year. So we'll see if the best defense in the country, arguably the Saskatoon Hilltops, which have been fantastic and get a stop. Here's the pressure and incomplete as it looks like the Hilltop sent the blitz there and Jesse just tried to get the ball out, hit someone at the line of scrimmage and it's gonna be second and long. Yeah, the Hilltops are coming with the, with full pressure on that one. Jesse knew it, he saw the guys coming to the line. The Hilltops are coming and they're so athletic up front. That's one thing you see their athletes and we don't get a chance to watch them all the time here in the BCFC, but when you see them here when they come out to BC, their, their players are just so athletic and they're so, they're so fast. And that's one of the best parts about the Canadian football, the Canadian Junior Football League is, is and the, even the Canadian Football League is the speed of these players and the Hilltops are loaded with a lot of speed on defense. Second and 10, in field goal range, in the red zone for the Rebels. And Jesse takes the snap and he's got trouble with it. And he's gonna try and scramble out of this, but he's not gonna go anywhere. It's Reese Kack with his first sack of the day. And now it turns into a long field goal situation as that's a disastrous snap for the Rebels. Disastrous snap for the Rebels. Reese Kack was Johnny on the spot there to bring make sure T. Jesse's not able to, to dart and worm his way around to get, a, get away from the pressure. So nice job there by the Saskatoon defense. And that that could be costly. Lion Uzi's got the leg to still kick this as he's going to be about 40 yards out. But that makes the field goal attempt a lot tougher for the Rebels. The last snap on the convert was a high one. We'll see what happens here, but great job by the Saskatoon defense to limit the Rebels there. Rebels looking to take their first lead of this football game. It's a rough snap, and Picard is going to throw this ball away, and it is going to be intercepted, and the Hilltops are going to take over at their own 35 as a bad snap, and Ethan Picard has to make something happen, and he throws the ball away. And that is going to be a turnover. And now the Hilltops have pretty good field position after all. A, a great, great hold there by the Saskatoon Hilltops after the Rebels get the, get the return by Barry, the 15-yard penalty. But they do what they've done all year long, and that's be very, very stingy on the defensive side of the ball. And they're still going to sit there on defense and say, hey, boys, we threw a shutout in the first half. And we got to throw another one here. So great job by the Hilltops there on defense. And Trey Reed on first down. He's going to go to Boston. And Davidson not going to have much where to go as Ted Windham Jr. gets in on the tackle. It's gain of about four, and that's going to bring up second and six. Holding a guy that, like Boston Davidson to only four yards is such a challenge. And the Rebels' defense there, they, they did a really good job keeping their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, not getting turned, not getting pushed backwards by the big hilltop offensive line. So holding a guy like Boston Davidson to only three or four yards, he's just so talented. If the Rebels could do that, they're probably going to have success, as I suspect Davidson will be getting a lot of yards and a lot of carries here in the second half for the Hilltops. Starlight Stadium trying to will their boys into a stop here as another play action and Reeder looking way downfield gets by Cody McMahon and he is going to be knocked out of bounds. I'm not sure if he got the first down marker. We'll have to wait and see. It's a close call as Trey Reeder heading for the sidelines. Don't know if he got there in time. Good stop by the Rebels if so. Great job there. They're going to move the chains by Reeder and you can see he's taking a page out of T. Jesse's book there where that run is because these guys are leaving it on the line today and, and he just basically sacrificed his body, took a big hit at the end of that play right out of bounds, which brought the fans to their feet. But he was he was saying, I'm going to get this first down here as I need to move the chains for my team. And these guys are leaving it all on the line today. Bryce Ruther in on the tackle as the rain is now coming down in droves. It's Davidson again. And Ferenmi Akinlola with a big stop as Davidson only gets about four yards on that one. A big stop by number 14 in red. Yeah, another big stop there. The Rebels, or excuse me, the Hilltops are going to continue to grind the ball out. And their offensive line is just like their defensive line in many ways. They're athletic guys. 
and they're big guys, but they can move. And that's the one thing that the Prairies have a lot of is, is a lot of talented offensive linemen and defensive linemen, and, and they're tough. And you've watched them, I've watched them play now in a quarter and a half year and throughout the season, and, and these guys these guys could play and they're not gonna be, they're not gonna back down. They're a tough football team. Second and five, the rain is pouring down here at Starlight. It's Davidson again, and he doesn't get there as that's a big tackle. And I didn't see who got it. It might have been Cody McMahon again as Boston Davidson can't get there. And it's third and short. Decision time now again for Tom Sargent. He's, this time he's, he is on his own side of midfield, but he's, he thought about that one a long, long time. And now he will send out his punt team as that's a tough one you, you want to go for because you're thinking you're only needing a yard here. But these conditions, and again, you know you got one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the country on your side. I think Coach Sargent's going to make the right call here, send his punt team out and let his defense go to work. So Wisk is going to punt this ball away as we are underwater again up here in the broadcast booth. And Wisk gets a good kick up into the air. Cairo Berry is back for it, makes the reception. He's got three hilltops right there off the get-go. And Cairo Berry somehow eludes the hilltops but loses the oh, football. No. That is a massive play if I think it's what happened is, and it is, and there's a, a roar here from the Hilltop fans here at Starlight, as not only were they able to stop Cairo Berry from getting it loose after it looked like he was going to, is they, they, they generate a turnover for themselves, and Cairo's trying to do so much on that play, and you'll see here he catches it, and he's just trying to make something happen, eludes the first rush, and there is nothing but, or, excuse me, gold helmets coming down on him, and the ball just comes right out of his hand. So turnovers, we said, were going to be huge at the outset of this game. That's a big one for the Hilltops. So now they have the ball deep in Rebel territory. Saskatoon is in Rebel territory. They're looking to make something happen. It's going to be a throw to the end zone. It's flamming again, and it is oh. incomplete. But pass interference looks to be the call as Josh Hoyt was there. And it looks like it's a free play and some positive yardage for the Hilltops as they'll march deeper into West Shore territory. Yeah, the Rebels aren't going to, they don't like this one from their vantage point here as there's another flag thrown on the near side as that's a tough, tough play as that ball kind of just hung up there. Didn't look like there was a little bit of hot, uh, contact right at the start of it with some hand checking by both guys, but that is such a tough call for the Rebels there and they're just going to have to compose themselves here and start making plays again on defense. Rebels fans voicing their displeasure. You can see the rain on the screen. It is nasty here at Starlight Stadium. Sideways rain coming straight down here into the broadcast booth and on the field. And it's played an element in this football game as well. We've seen some fumbles, some loose snaps, and that is going to be a storyline to watch as this game continues on and no end in sight of this rain. Yeah, and, there, and the, there's going to be more plays like that that are going to happen throughout this course of the game. The key for both of these teams, are they going to have to try and limit it and hope that they're going to get a few going in their direction. So this is an adverse, a, a tough situation for the Rebels here, but they've got to just settle down and play the way they have throughout the course of this game and they'll be fine. But the Hilltops knocking at the door as they get a big play there on the penalty and now they're within striking distance here with about five minutes gone here in this third quarter. It's, it is loud in here too. Starlight Stadium trying to will the Rebels to a stop here as Reeder takes the snap. It's Boston Davidson going up the middle and he is going to be stopped short of the goal line but still a pretty positive gain as Gio Lanuzzi gets in on the tackle and it's second and goal. And, and they did exactly what I would do there if I'm the Hilltops. And I'm, if I'm them, I'm going right back to Boston Davidson there as he just he just lowered his head and tried to will himself to the goal line there and ran hard and I would be surprised. They might, everybody might be thinking the same thing and it might, look, it might be a play action play, but if it's me, I'm going to Boston Davidson here on second down. Second and goal at the three yard line. It's Davidson again and he is gonna be stopped. It's third and goal as the Rebels once again get to Davidson. It's a gain of about two, so it's about a foot. Yeah, to the you, goal saw, line. you saw the Hilltop the, uh, receivers and, and offensive players as they bring in some their bigger package, their goal line package here comes on the field for the Hilltops. You saw them signaling to the bench. They only need a couple of feet here. So what a massive play here on third down. And we saw in the first half, T. Jesse had problems with under center with being able to get momentum, get that snap. We'll see if Reeder goes under center for the Hilltops. But this is a massive, massive play in this football game here in the third quarter. This comes down to who wants it more. 
Third and goal from the one. Reader, handoff, touchdown. Hilltops, Boston Davidson. And the Hilltops have taken the lead off of a third and goal gamble. And it is 13 to seven Hilltops. Great run there by Davidson. And he's, he's designed for these types of games in these types of situations. As you can see here, great vantage point right down there, right on the one yard line. And Davidson is just such a force. He drives, drives his legs, gets into the end zone. That's a great run in there by Boston Davidson and Saskatoon Hilltop offensive line as they nudge ahead now here 13-7 with the extra point coming. Here is the extra point. The kick is up. The kick is good. Make it 14-7 Hilltop. So after the first play of the half with Cairo Berry's electric return, the Hilltops have answered back and now have a one-score lead once again. And you knew they probably would. I mean, the Hilltops have been here before. They've been perennial Canadian Bowl representatives from the Prairie Football Conference, winning six in a row, I believe, from 2014 to 2019. So. I mean, they're they're a veteran. They always have a veteran coaching staff, of course, led by Tom Sargent. But they're not going to panic in situations like that. And the Rebels, to their credit, they get the big play by Cairo Berry. If you're on the Rebels bench and if you're watching this game and, and, and have a history of this of this Saskatoon Hilltop franchise, you know that they're going to answer, and, and they just did there. So now it's up to the Rebels. They get their chance now. The ball's going to be back in their hands. They've got to show that they they're in this caliber and this weight class and respond here against the Hilltops. They've done it all year long, so we'll see what they do here on offense. It is going to be Garen Hardesty on the kick return. He's looking to his left. He makes a cut, and he is going to be brought down just past the 35-yard line. As haven't heard Hardesty's name a whole lot since the early portions of this game, but he gets the return there. Yeah, I was going to say this the exact same thing as you were, Tyler, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rebels go back to, to Jaron Hardesty. And he's just he's so talented. He's a lot like Boston Davidson, where He's got those power strides. They're not the biggest guys in the world, but they just bring so much power. And I'd be surprised if we don't see a lot more of Jaron Hardesty in this third and fourth quarter here at the Canadian Bowl. And there is Hardesty on the handoff on first down. And here comes Jaron Hardesty up the middle. It's a gain of 15 and a Rebels first down as Hardesty with an electric run on his first touch of the second half. Right on cue, there's Jaron Hardesty. He's going to come off the field now here to get a little bit of a break to let Malik Gagne Smith come in, but right on cue, Jaron Hardesty does exactly what he's done all year long, which led to him to be a conference all-star as he goes right into the teeth of that Saskatoon Hilltop, pick up a big first down. The Rebels responding here, here as they approach midfield after just one play on offense. Jesse going with a widespread offense. He's got Gagne Smith in the backfield. He takes the snap. He's going to throw this one out to the right. It is Cairo Berry. It is caught, and he is going to be brought down in a hurry. It's a gain of about four as that's Carter Wingert on the tackle, and that's going to bring up second and six. Really nice tackle there by Wingert there as Cairo Berry in open field is a nightmare for defensive players to try and bring down, and the Saskatoon Hilltop Wingert made it a fantastic play as if Berry is able to break that tackle. I wouldn't be surprised if he's added another 10 or 15 yards to that total. So nice tackle there by the Hilltops to keep Berry to vote four on that play. Near midfield, it's a second and six. The Rebels haven't been very successful on second down plays. Let's see if they can get it here and keep the chains moving. As Jesse takes the snap, looking, pressure's right there. He's gonna roll out to his right, and he's gonna take it himself, and he's gonna be brought down short of the first down marker as simply nowhere to go with the football. And that was Kai Kukuzurda, sorry for the pronunciation, making the tackle. And that's going to bring up third and one. Once again, good downfield coverage there as Jesse's got nowhere to go. He had a bit of time on that one, but the Hilltop secondary was able to glob on to the, the Rebel receivers and not give Jesse a target there as he tried to get what he can here. Gambling time here. Another huge third down play. I wasn't sure if Dexter Janky would kick this one to play field position, but he's got a lot of confidence in this dynamic offense. And T. Jesse and the offense are going to stay on the field here for a massive third and about a long one and a half, maybe two yards. Jesse takes the snap. He's going to throw this football. Here comes the pressure. Jesse needs to get there, and he is not going to get there as the Rebels are going to turn it over on downs as Jesse tried to scramble out of the pocket, but nowhere to go with the football. 
And the Rebels are going to come up empty on this drive. Once again, you see why they've done what they've done throughout the whole Prairie Football Conference season, and including the playoffs and national semifinal. As Jesse's got a bit of time, he just can't find anybody as he's surveying the field downfield. And you could tell the coaches probably went into the locker room and said, let's make sure we not only look at look, worry and take care of T. Jesse's arm, we got to worry about his legs. And T. Jesse there wasn't able to get enough for the first down. And that's a big turnover again. That's another one for the Rebels. They turned it over on the Barry return. Now they turn it over on down. So two big turnovers here in this in this third quarter here have put the Hilltops in a good position. Craig Torkinson is the Hilltop down on the ground as you see number 56. Hopefully he's all right. As they're checking in on him and then it will be Hilltops football at the 50 yard line on Hilltops territory looking to pad on to a one score lead which they got on their last drive after a long drive down the field after again the Rebels opened up the half with a, an electric kick return touchdown by Cairo Berry and again we, we talked about it in the first half Tyler that uh, T. Jesse and the offense just they've had slow starts but it hasn't been this long that we've been waiting for their offense to really open up. No and they're still I still get the sense that they're gonna have a big play they're just it's good to see the injured Hilltop get to his feet and come out the field but I, I think it's like you're sitting on the edge of our seat waiting for that and, 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 and in anticipation. And they've done it all year long. Obviously not having Kieran Passant is a massive blow, but they've been doing it for the last couple of weeks without him. And I think it, it, you just get the sense it's a big play is going to happen, hopefully for the Rebels on their side of the ball. But both of these teams, you just get the, the feeling something big is going to happen. And for obviously purposes, it should be a big part of this game. So Reader on first down goes to Boston Davidson, who makes a cut. Gets by a couple defenders, and he's only going to gain about a yard, if that, as Boston Davidson is going to be heavily relied upon here in the second half. Already has a touchdown to his name here, and that's gain of one, so it's going to be second and nine. Second and nine, I think he had about 72 yards in that first half, Boston Davidson did, but it was how hard those 72 yards were for him and then the toll they took on the Rebels' defense as far as how he runs and how hard it is to bring a guy like that down. So. He's going to be a big factor here, so we're going to get a quick, we're going to get a uh, stoppage of play here. But this is another massive play here for uh, second and about nine here. So ball might have just moved a little bit here with the wind. But Boston Davidson, no doubt, is going to be a factor for the rest of this game as we're winding down here the third quarter. So lots of opportunities for him throughout. Second and nine. Reader with a quick pass off to the right, and not a lot of room to go with there. And that's Bryce Ruther in on the tackle. Nowhere to go for the Hilltops as that's Xavier Sabo with his first reception of the game. And that's going to bring up third and about six. Reader just trying to get the ball out of his hand right away, like the call. You're just trying to rely on your athlete being able to make a couple guys miss. And, and unfortunately for the Hilltops, that didn't happen on that play there. So the Rebels are going to get the ball back after this punt. But the Hilltops, it just look, they, they look content to just say, you know what, we're going to play defense. We're quite happy. We're comfortable. We're going to punt the ball here. We know we got some talented guys on both sides of the ball, but defense has been huge for the Hilltops, and they look quite comfortable playing that way. Matt Wist with a good punt. Cairo Berry going to return it. There's three Hilltops right there, and Berry has no other option than to go down and near his own 30-yard line, and the Rebels going to take over haven't done much with the football to this point they need to change that narrative if they want to get back in this football game they do and I still think I, if I'm them I'm coming back to Jaron Hardesty and he had that big run on my last drive he's out there right now again I just get the sense that he could lots of times be that spark plug Cairo Berry could certainly do that too but I, I just like the I like the thought of being able to get the ball into his hands get him going here get him some multiple touches on, on multiple plays consecutive plays get him involved just like the Hilltops are doing Boston Davidson Jesse with the receivers in motion. It is going to be a handoff play to Hardesty, and it's only being, going to be a gain of about two, maybe three, as Hardesty tried to go right up the gut. And this Hilltop's defensive line has been rock solid all day long, and it's going to bring up a second and six. And with getting that yards, and yeah, it was only three or maybe four yards as they line the, the sticks down there. But what it does is it puts the, the, makes the Hilltops respect the run. And it points to them and say the Rebels aren't just going to start throwing it. There's tons of time left in this game with a quarter and three minutes left. So there's no panic. They can keep the running game going and maybe take their shots. But that's what sets up the play action with the Rebels that have had success with that throughout the year as well. So running the ball opens up other things on offense. Jesse looking to throw here on second down. And Cairo Berry in and out of the hands. Incomplete. As a slippery ball might have been the enemy on that one. And that's going to bring out the Rebels punt team another 
two and out. That's one that Cairo Berry catches. T. Jesse throws this one. You couldn't have thrown it any better as that's right in Cairo's hands. And as soon as that one, all it takes is your eyes to dart downfield and glance downfield. And that's what happened there is Cairo Berry, every time he touches the ball, he's a guy who thinks he can score. So he's not going to like that play there as he knows he should have had that one for his team. Chris McClarty with a sky high punt. This one is going to drop out of bounds right near the Saskatoon 50 yard line. And it's good field position again for the Hilltops. As they will take over with 2.27 remaining in this third quarter. 14 to seven, the Hilltops lead and they'll look to pat on here at the end of the third quarter. Yeah, definitely as we near the end of the third quarter here, that next, that next score, regardless of whether it's a, a, a field goal or a touchdown, you just sense how critical that's gonna be as these teams defense stifen up a little bit here. And you just get the sense the next score is going to be a big one here for either team. Here comes the pressure. Trey Reader scrambling out. He barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Cody McMahon and Praise Odegon were right there. So it's going to be a second and ten as Trey Reader looked downfield for a shot, but no one was open, and he scrambles out of bounds. And that's what you do if you're Reader here. As you can see, he's got his eyes downfield. He's looking to take a shot here. Praise Odegon is right in there after him. He's going to get what he can, tuck, his, tuck, his, tuck the ball away, get a couple of yards. Good job there by Cody McMahon, not even risky taking it out of bounds penalty or hit out of bounds. So second and eight and yet another massive play. It seems to be the theme here. Big one here for the, the Hilltops. Reader gonna throw and it is gonna be caught short of the first down marker as Drake Douglas with a defender wrapped all over him makes the catch and that's gonna bring up a third and two. <laughs> Coach Sargent's gonna be dreading this yardage all day today as he's been put on the spot to have to make decisions on third and one, third and two seemingly all day so far and it's it's a, it's but again he's staying consistent he's going to send the punt team out but that yardage third and one third and a yard and a half third and two the hilltops have had so many of those today and, and then they're doing what i think is the smart thing to do is just relying on your defense play good defense don't turn the ball over at midfield don't short field yourself and that's what the hilltops are doing and they don't seem to mind it they're they're quite happy and confident in the defense that they could put out Matt Wiss going to kick this ball away once again for the Hilltops. And it's a good snap, good hold, good kick. And this one a bit shorter. Cairo Berry going to try and run in on this one. And he's going to receive it. And he's got Hilltops all over him right away. And he's going to stay on his feet, though. And maybe a bit of negative yardage, if that, as Cairo Berry looked for something but couldn't find any daylight. And he's going to be down near his own 15-yard line. That field position, again, as they've been playing more on this side of the field on, for the Rebels is as it's in the other side of the field is probably getting a little maybe drier a little wetter over on the outside but this this third quarter has been played predominantly on the rebel side of midfield so they're going to have to tilt that back in their favor and as the hilltops have played fantastically defense fantastic defense here today so rebels need a big play and we've seen them do it all year long but do they have one in them against this tough saskatoon defense Jesse takes the snap. It's a handoff play to Hardesty looking up the middle. He's got some daylight to work with. Here goes Garrett Hardesty up the middle. It's a great gain, a run of about 20 yards as that is a big play for Hardesty late in this third quarter. And he's a guy that, that lives on emotion and he's such a guy who gets so fired up and you can see it there. They're just running a little counter play there and you can see the Rebels kick out there on the end and then Hardesty's in the hole before he can blink and he just cuts and darts his way, misses, makes a couple man miss and he picks up a 20 plus yard gain and he's capable of doing that. And if I'm the Rebels, I said it on the previous drive, I'm feeding them the rock as much as I can here as this game gets, gets deeper and deeper. C.J. Vincent with some great blocking on the inside as well. And it's a first and 10. And Jesse loses the football again. And he is going to have to just go on it. He wants a flag. And it looks like he's going to get it as Jesse was roughed with as he was down on the ground. And it's going to be a Saskatoon penalty. And that turns net zero into a positive yardage at the end of that play. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how in this game, and we've seen it all, all night long here, all day long, it's such an emotional roller coaster there. The Hilltops are going to catch such a break here. It's going to be a second long after the, the, the snap. And let's say All of a sudden, somebody lands on top of play, Jesse. Jesse two. Could have been a yard massive penalty. defensive play. First down. Turns into a 15 yard game for the Rebels as there's an unnecessary roughness penalty. And that just went right through T. Jesse's hands. And it's just like you see it right there at the end. I don't think, I mean, he didn't hit him anywhere near the head. He was trying to make a play, the Hilltop defender. And you can see he, he's just trying to be aggressive and make sure he finishes the play. 10.8 seconds remaining in this third quarter. It's a one score game. And the Rebels got a juice of life there by 
that roughing the passer penalty. Can they make this one work out? The ball is spotted at the 40 yard line. And Jesse gonna take the snap. It's another handoff to Hardesty up the middle. And it's a good gain, about seven. That is gonna stop the clock. And it's not gonna stop the clock. Should be a couple seconds left on the clock. It got down here to zeros at Starlight, but I think there's gonna be another play there. Referees always have the official time on the field, but a couple seconds did run off the clock here, but either way, this is gonna be the final play of the third quarter, barring a penalty, but good gain there by Hardesty is once again, a good seven, eight yard run as he just goes right in at the Saskatoon Hilltop front seven. And it's a tough one, but Hardesty was able to get seven yards there. Second and three. Rebels need a first down here as Jesse takes the snap. It's another handoff to Hardesty going up the middle and he is not gonna get there as the Hilltop's defensive line makes the stop. It's gonna be third and short, and that is gonna be the end of our third quarter. The Hilltops rally back from an early score by Cairo Berry and take a one score lead into the fourth quarter. We've got a magnificent finish coming up. Don't go anywhere. The fourth quarter is back after these messages. Uh, my name's Harold Skadberg. I am co-owner of Viking Properties, formerly uh, Pacific Coast Land. My name is Jan Egil Gulbranson. I'm a co-owner and partner with Harold in Viking Properties. We're uh, fortunate enough to have Ben um, taking over more and more for us. He's been working with me for probably four or five years now, and the uh, company is in good hands. My name is Ben Gulbranson. I'm the president of uh, Pacific Viking Group Properties. So what we try to do is really provide the most square footage uh, possible within people's price range in a very neutral palette so that people can come in and, and make their own mark on their own home. Welcome back inside Starlight Stadium for the start of our fourth quarter of action. We're at a third and inches situation here for the Rebels, and they are looking to keep this drive alive. It looks to be another QB sneak. They were unsuccessful in the first quarter. Let's see if they can get it here. Here comes T. Jesse. Did he get there? Oh, it's going to be close. We'll have to probably wait and see with a measure as... That one, I think, if you look at the far side of the field where the officials got his foot, that one he looked to have got a little bit more momentum. He didn't need much there again. This one, I think, is going to be enough. It is for the Rebels. So, but boy, these third down and ones, third and one and a half, third and inches, as we've seen those all day for both teams. The coaches must be pulling their hair out with having so many pressure situations to the side there. And the Rebels really had to work it for every inch on that one. In that case, they do get enough to move the sticks and get a fresh set of downs. So the chains move, the ball still on West Shore territory on their 50 yard line. As T. Jesse has Hardesty in the backfield, receivers in motion, and it's a handoff play to Hardesty again, looking up the middle, and that Hilltop's defensive line doesn't allow much. That's a gain of maybe a couple as Hardesty trying to go right up the middle, meets the Hilltops, it's gonna be second and seven. Yeah, they don't, they don't give up much for sure, and they haven't all season long, but what that does again is it just presents other opportunities. It forces the Hilltops to play as sound as they always do on the defensive side of the ball. But what it does is it forces, it, it, it leaves the doubt that the Rebels are still quite content to run the football. And, and, and if that's the case, the defensive has to respect the run and the pass, which again, we've said it a couple times here today, that sets up the play action, which the Rebels are, are deadly at. So Jesse taking the snap. He's gonna throw this ball. It is in the air and incomplete as CJ Vincent was the intended receiver. And Matt Wist, number 44 in the Hilltops, has been dynamite all day, all, all around the field, kicking, making some plays on defense, and now it's third and seven. Third and seven here. I'm, I'm assuming the Rebels are going to be punting this football, although they haven't sent their punt team on the field yet. And T. Jesse staying on the field, so this is really a gutsy call here by Dexter Jenke and the Rebel offense here with just at the start of the, at the start of the fourth quarter. They're going for it here on third and seven, and to say this is a critical play is putting it mildly, Tyler. It is gamble time at Starlight Stadium. Third and seven in the fourth quarter, and the Rebels are going for it. Here's the snap, and it is a kick play after all. And the Hilltops have trouble with the ball, and they're just gonna have to get on top of this one. As that ball down near the 30, it caught the Hilltops off guard, so mission complete. 
as everyone held their breath for a collective moment. But in the end, T. Jesse kicks it away and actually not bad field position for the Rebels. Yeah, and the Rebels have done that before. I think we saw it in the Cullen Cup or the, or the BCFC semifinal game. But T. Jesse there has the ability to do that. I was thinking to myself, wow, this is... This is crazy, or not crazy, but very gutsy, I guess, maybe is the right word, if they're going for that. So Rebels try and get the quick kick. They could have had some guys on side to be able to catch that one, but the Hilltops were able to get on that ball alertly and make sure that the, the Rebels weren't able to come downfield and keep the ball for themselves. Trey Reader back on the field for the Hilltops. It's Boston Davidson eluding the tackle of, of one uh, Bryce Ruther was right in the backfield right away, but luckily he escaped. It's a gain of two, and it's going to be second and about six. Yeah, Ruther almost took the handoff on that one as he was right in the Hilltop backfield right away, and that was a fortunate break for the Hilltops as they still were able to get a good four, almost five yards on that play. So big play here on second down as the Hilltops want to be able to move the chains, keep the ball, keep the time of possession for themselves in this fourth quarter. So here is Reeder looking to throw downfield, and it is caught. Shot. Nice play. There is, that is Datiel Fontaine with the catch, gain of 15, and that is going to move the chains. Nice shot there by Reader to Fontaine as, as Fontaine just sat down right on the soft spot of that defense. He knew he was going to potentially take a hit. He knew he was going to probably take a hit on that one, but he does what he can. He just sits down, throws a target, makes it makes it easy for Reader as, as easy as possible to make a completion. So good job there by the Hilltops on offense. Here is Reader again, got Davidson in the backfield and that is where the ball is going as Boston Davidson tearing up the middle and he is through a huge gain for Boston Davidson as about five Rebels could have brought him down but didn't and that is a massive gain for the Hilltops. And that's a massive play and, and Davidson he's been banging and crashing again in his three, four, seven, eight, ten yard gains throughout and some of them haven't been big yardage plays but what it does is it wears the defense down for the fourth quarter exactly in times like this where you can see the Rebels on defense there did not look very good as, as Davidson's been able to beat a couple arm tackles and with his power and, and speed he's able to pull off a big game for the Hilltops. Hilltops in striking distance now as it's Davidson on a handoff to his right gonna break through some tackles and that time praise Odegun is in there so it's a gain of about four maybe five as Davidson doesn't quite break away that time and you can just feel the momentum shifting back towards the hilltops here looking to extend the lead past the score here in the fourth quarter much better defense there though by the hilltops limiting that gain it was probably yeah probably only about a two or three yard gain there by Davidson he's such a tough guy to hold to those types of minimal yardage much better defense there by the team in red the West Shore Rebels second and eight reader has got the receivers in motion, has some trouble with the snap. Here comes the pressure, and he is going to be brought down as Ted Windham Jr. in on the sack. And that is a huge stop as now it's going to be kick time for the Hilltops as Ted Windham Jr. takes advantage of a tough snap, and it looks like the kick team coming out here for the Hilltops. Yeah, that's a massive play there. As he, it was a loss of yards on the play, so the, the Hilltops end up losing about four yards, but great play there by Windham there. As he, they needed to make a big play stop the Hilltops from moving the chains. It's going to be a field goal opportunity. And we talked about it a couple minutes ago. We got the sense that another score to make this a two-score game or to tie this one up if it came in the favor of the Rebels was going to be huge. Now the Hilltops have an opportunity with a 40-yard field goal to do just that. I'd be worried about the guy in the back of the end zone there. That's Cairo Berry. So if you're the Hilltops, you want to hit this. Here comes the kick, lots of time, and it is through. Tack on three points as the Hilltops extend their lead. It is 17 to seven as Tejon Abel Douglas kicks through the field goal. And now the Rebels need two possessions to take the lead in this football game. Massive, massive kick there for the Hilltops as they extend their lead to 10. Rebels are gonna take the ball here on first down, not electing to take a return. But that's a huge kick, and that's a pressure kick. I mean, you're you're in a Canadian go Canadian Bowl game in the fourth quarter. Your team's leading by seven in a, in a hostile crowd, and you just bang through a 40-yard field goal with, with lots of yards to spare. Great job there by Douglas and the Hilltops, and time is ticking on the West Shore Rebels as there's still lots of time here left, but they need to now get two scores. So they've got to start to get their, their offensive gear here, start to get some chunk plays down the field, and we know they're capable of doing it. They just got to do it against what we said all day, day long, a tough, very tough Saskatoon defense. A piece of Saskatoon, a piece of the Prairie is here at Starlight Stadium cheering on their hilltops. And they are looking in good position here with nine minutes to go 
And it's up to the Rebels and T. Jesse to see if they've got something to say about it. First down, Jesse looking to throw. Here comes the pressure, and that is going to be caught by Cairo Berry past the first down marker, and that is going to move the chains. Moves the chains there as Jesse goes back to Cairo Berry, one of his go-to guys, and he was able to get about 12 yards there. Threw it nice and low there. So the only one who's going to catch that one was Cairo Berry is because that's what happened on that one. So they're probably going to pick up their pace here, just over nine minutes left, and they can strike fast. We've seen it all year long. So Rebels wouldn't. Rebels got to get the ball down the field and keep making those types of plays. First and 10, still in Rebels territory on their 47-yard line. As Jesse takes the snap, it's an empty backfield. He's looking to throw. He's got lots of time, and it is going to be caught. Nice play wow. by C.J. Vincent. Wow. And that is a huge reception as he is a contortionist out on the field. That's a gain of 12, and that moves the chains again. Another of the go-to guys for the West Shore Rebels. That was C.J. Vincent as he makes another beautiful catch there. As you, you're right, bang on, Tyler. He had to be a contortionist almost to be able to catch that one. He just contorts himself back, and that's a fantastic catch. And C.J. Vincent's another guy who's been picking up the pace a lot, and as the playoffs have come and the end of the season, he's been dynamic for the West Shore Rebels. First and 10. Hand off to Hardesty, and here comes the Hilltops, and Hardesty breaks through the tackle as that was nearly a huge loss of yardage, and Hardesty able to break the tackle and gain at least a couple to make it second and eight. Yeah, that was nearly about a three or four yard loss, and the Rebels are fortunate on that one to get about a two yard gain, but Hardesty was able to break the initial Hilltop defender. I didn't get a number on that one, but a, a defender got in there right away for the Hilltops, just knifed his way in, so only a two yard gain, but so second and eight for the Rebels, but that could have been not so good if you're the team in red. So the Rebels into Hilltop's territory here. Jesse looking to throw, it is caught. That is CJ Vincent, a huge gain of 25. And CJ Vincent is fired up and so is the Starlight Stadium crowd. It's a big West Shore first down. Well, if it was a response you were asking for, if you're a Rebel fan, you've got one on this drive as T. Jesse's been bang on and with a couple catches to Cairo Berry and CJ Vincent and he's been spot on with his passes on this drive and that's another big chunk play that we, that we said they needed with the start of this drive. Rebels are marching and this is far from done here at Starlight. Jesse on first down, he's gonna throw to his right. It is caught by Zion Brown and he's gonna be brought down in a hurry. So that's a gain of about five and that is gonna bring up second and five. Yeah, I got it. Got half the distance there as, as that's Zion Brown again and he's made a couple of those types of plays that have just set his team up for second and manageable and Zion Brown got another one there at a critical part in this game. Second and five, T. Jesse. Got his receivers in motion. He's going to throw this one quickly, and it is going to be incomplete as Cairo Berry was the intended receiver, but the throw was off, and now decision time for the Rebels. Looks like they're going to try and kick this one through the uprights and make this a one-score game. Yeah, and that, that throw was just a little bit off there by Cairo Berry and T. Jesse, so the Rebels respond. They got some yardage. They moved the ball down the field. They're going to get an opportunity to once again cut this to a one-score game. That's what they had to do on this particular drive. A field goal like this is by no means easy. It's a 30-yarder for Lion Uzi. He's got plenty of leg to do this, but so many intangibles with a win like this. Here is the kick by Lion Uzi. It is up, and it is good. Gio Lion Uzi with a big kick makes this a seven-point game with 6.25 remaining on the clock. And that is mission accomplished for the Rebels on that drive as now they are within striking distance with one, maybe two more times with the football here before this is all said and done. Yeah, and another clutch kick here. If I, the Hilltops got one, now the now the West Shore Rebels get one with Lion Uzi from 30 yards out. And people say, well, it's 30 yards in the Hilltops case, the 40 yarder that they hit. But I mean, those are clutch kicks by two by two talented kickers that had lots of legs. They're right down the center of the uprights. And, that, and we're in a Canadian Bowl and playing, a lot of these guys playing the game of their life. So good job by both kickers as they hit, they hit big field goals. Boston Davidson on the handoff on first down as he rumbles through a gain of about eight as he will be public enemy number one for this Rebels defense late in the football game as he just has seem, seemingly not been able to be stopped in this football game. Yeah, I'm thinking the Rebels are going to have to dial up a blitz or some kind of stud here knowing that Boston Davidson is going to be a big factor here in the fourth quarter as the clock will eventually become an enemy of the Rebels here and they need the ball back. So I'd be surprised on second and short if we don't see the ball in Boston Davidson's hands. Second and about three. Here is Trey Reader calling his own number and he gets there on the dive. 
Smart play there by Trey Reeder, calling his own number, just gets by the first down marker, and that is a Hilltop's first down, and now looking at the clock, that starts to be the enemy for the Rebels as well. Yeah, both teams have two timeouts as Reeder and the Hilltop's offense just ran an option play there, and with all the attention you can see here, he could pitch that out, Reeder could pitch that out to Boston Davidson. He saw a bit of a seam, the defender went towards Davidson, so Reeder was able to dive and just get enough of that first down by about a yard or so, so good job by Reeder there using his legs. First and 10 on their 45 yard line. Reader gonna throw this one. He's looking deep downfield. It's Noah Flamin and it is incomplete as in and out of the hands. That would have been a huge play in this football game. Noah Flamin had 93 yards in the first half. Haven't seen a big reception yet and that nearly broke this game wide open. Yeah, that would have been a massive completion by Reader to, to Flamin and he was open. They ran a corner out there, or some will call it a, a flag route. And, and he was open, and the, with the ball, it's just such a tough thing to get that ball in where and drop it in where you need to drop it in with the wind like this. But that was thrown in only a place where a Saskatoon receiver and Flamin could have caught it. Reader on second down, throwing towards the sideline. Needing to back up is Drake Douglas. He is going to be thrown out of bounds well short. That's only a gain of about five, and that is going to bring down third down, and looks like the Hilltops are going to kick this football away. Yeah, they're going to kick this one. They're going to punt this one back to the Rebels. So good job by the Rebels there. They get their stop. Reader's throw there as he just tried to swing that one out to the sidelines. But it actually, because I don't know if it was the wind or just the throw was a little offline, it actually took the Hilltop receiver a little bit further back than he wanted to go. And they was, by the time he had his hands on, he was only able to get about three or four yards. So the Rebels, they get the three points on their previous drive. Now they get the stop on defenses. As we get into crunch time now with four and a half minutes, now they're going to get the ball back. Buckle up, folks. This is going to be a finish. As the Hilltop's about to kick this ball away, Matt Wist has done it well all day. Cairo Berry waiting for this one. And this one is going to be a short kick at that. Cairo Berry having to come way in. And that one skips by. Riley Burfello having trouble with it, and he is just going to lie down on this one. So still going to start around their own 30-yard line there. And... Time for the Rebels offense to wake up here and see if they can get seven on the board and tie up this football game. Yeah, you like what you saw on the last drive there by the Rebels where they had the ball, they were able to complete some passes to Barry, and to, to, to CJ Vincent, and, and T was, was spot on with a lot of the throws. And he's gonna need to be here in the last four minutes of change here if the Rebels are gonna tie this one up. But you like what you saw if you're a Rebel fan, you like what you saw on the last drive, but now you need your team to get a major on the offensive side of the ball. E. Jesse takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw this one. It's C.J. Vincent on the dump off play, and he is going to get himself about six yards on that one as C.J. Vincent on the check down. Gain of six, make it second and four. Yeah, I don't. Oh, he only got a couple there because see where they mark it. But yeah, it's minimal gain there by C.J. Vincent. But I like the call. They just ran a screen play off to the right hand side there. But the Hilltops played that one really well defensively. A lot of times it looked like the Hilltops were coming with a bit of a pressure package there, but but the, they were able to drop out, and they're so athletic, as we mentioned on defense, they were able to fly into the ball to limit that game. So it's second and eight, and the Rebels really need this one. As you see the clock, 324 left here at Starlight, and Jesse going to throw this. It's going to be caught. <laughs> Big play, wow. C.J. Vincent makes the catch, and that's going to move the chains. Big play there, and, and, and again, there's you see the skill of T. Jesse and why he is what he is, is there's an injured Saskatoon Hilltop on the play, but C.J. Vincent was, was just sat right down. T. Jesse hung on to that as long as he could. He knew the blitz was going to come in, but he was able to stand in long enough, just give Vincent enough time to clear those linebackers, went to the, went to the ground, was able to corral that and get a first down. Noah Gadir is the Hilltop player who is down on the field. Hopefully he's all right as the Rebels throwing the ball but throwing the ball short I haven't I can't even recall a T Jesse throw that was a post route or a streak we have we, everything's been five to ten yards everything has been a little shorter and, and good to see that Hilltop defender get to his feet and come off on his own power so hopefully he'll be back in this game and he's okay but you're right they're the, the shots that they've taken if they have tried to go vertical against Saskatoon so far today it's been down the seams they haven't been able to hit anything to the outside any fade routes any go routes, anything of any significant yardage, for the most part today that I can remember has been down the seams, but more curls, more outs, more more under routes, like that kind of stuff. But the Rebels eventually, they got lots of time here as we're just under three minutes. They haven't been able to hit a big one vertical yet, but 
There's still lots of time to do so. Only one safety back here for the Hilltops as flags fly. And Jesse going to throw this one for Barry. It's caught. Big reception for Cairo Barry. They're within the 45-yard line as Cairo Barry makes the reception. Let's wait and see what this penalty is. That would be huge if this one is against West Shore. I think there was early movement against Saskatoon on this one. We'll see if my eyes are right. This is early movement by the Hilltop, so okay, that play is going to stand. And T. Jesse, I think, knew Ball's exactly there. what I saw Ball's up here. Three minutes. Is they could sense and feel the pressure. He knew he had a free play Outside. on that one. And he knew he had C or Cairo Plus Berry two. running Henry's a deep, deep five. in route or a dig route, First as sometimes down. people will call it. And Cairo Berry, the playmaker who's been electric here with the big return and some other plays, just made another one. And now the Rebels are in Saskatoon territory. 2.43 left on the clock. The Rebels marching down the field, down a score. The 2023 Canadian Bowl on the line. The stakes don't get bigger than this. Not too many leaving the stadium at this point. This, one, this one's been a beauty. Jesse takes the snap, fakes the pass. Pressure coming, caught as that is CJ Vincent just getting out in time as T. Jesse blown up as he threw and looks like that's going to be Second and short, so gain of nine and a half as C.J. Vincent just couldn't get that first down. Second and short here might be an opportunity, although with the way they've handled some of the short yards, you might just try and get this first down. But that's such a tough catch by C.J. Vincent, and he's such a tough player in there. He's made a lot of those catches, but that one could have easily, as he took a hit from behind after he caught it, that could have easily been jarred loose to be an incomplete pass or a fumble if you had possession. But C.J. Vincent has been dynamite for the Rebels here in the Canadian Bowl today. Second in inches, T. Jesse on the sneak. He's got the first down and then some. As T. Jesse gonna move the chains here, 2.16 on the clock. As we'll pick up from the rubble, but from our vantage point, T. Jesse got the first down and then some. But I it looks like they're gonna be. I would concur with you on that one. Close, yep, and there's the point. So that is a first down for the Rebels as they continue marching down the field and are now in striking distance, but they need seven. They need seven now, and as you get down around two minutes left here in the fourth quarter here at Starlight, both teams have two timeouts, so lots of time here to go over, but you gotta think the Rebels are, are in three down territory for the rest of this one. It is crunch time at Starlight Stadium. You can feel the pressure building. Fans are up. Let's see what happens. T. Jesse gonna try a screen pass to Hardesty. He drops the football. And that is going to be incomplete. They're saying it's a forward pass, and the Hilltops are furious. They say it's a lateral, but it looks like it's going to be an incompletion. So, oh, oh. that's a close Careful. call. Yeah, no kidding. That was such. A, that was a close call. I think it still was a lateral. The Hilltops are obviously thinking it was the other way, but I think. But it just looked like the offensive lineman that was pulling out there was really slow on that play, causing it to be a hard completion for T to make. And you can see right there, number 52 is standing almost right beside Jaron Hardesty on that one. So a little bit of timing issue caused some nervous moments here at Starlight for the Rebel faithful. 154 left to go, second and 10. Ball spotted at the 32 yard line. In Hilltops territory, the Rebels need a touchdown to get back into this football game. Receivers in motion, Jesse takes the snap. He's looking downfield. Here's the throw, it is wow. in intercepted. Matt Wist with the inter interception. He's still going down the field. It's another fumble. Flags are flying. What is going on? We'll have to wait and see where this goes. But either way, this does not spell good news for the West Shore Rebels. No, it doesn't spell good news for West Shore Rebels. And what an interception there by Wisk and the Saskatoon Hilltops defense. Talk about a timely play on their side of the ball. And they had to make one there as the Rebels were driving. And T. Jesse was looking for Cairo Berry. Cairo was open there for a second, as you could see him come across. But that's a nice defensive play by the Saskatoon Hilltops, and that's a block below the waist call. It's not going to matter. The Hilltops are going to keep that ball. That's a Hilltop penalty, and they just made a massive play, defensive play with a minute and a half left in the Canadian Bowl. Zion Brown injured on that play. And looks like he's not going to be back in this football game as he's having a tough go. But now it is on the Rebels' defense to get some stops. They've got two timeouts left, but they cannot give up any first downs. No, you're going to, I mean, the Rebels, if you're not glued in on Boston Davidson here, you're, 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 you've been missing a different game. So, I mean, I suspect you're going to see a lot of the Boston Davidson here. They do have their two timeouts. That's the positive part here. But they need to get a quick two and out, try and get the ball back as fast as possible. 
and, and see if their offense get down the field. They can do this. They can still get a quick strike here. But the Saskatoon Hilltops just made a massive play here on defense in their favor when it looked like the, the Rebels were driving. It is the biggest drive of this season. And the Rebels desperately need a stop. Trey Reader under center. Hand off to Davidson, right up the middle, and he is going to be stopped in his tracks as Ted Windham Jr. gets in on the tackle. It's a gain of maybe a couple, and that's going to bring up second down, and we'll see if the Rebels use their first timeout. They did use their first timeout on that one. Dexter Janke was right on the field there calling that one, and he had to. Defense did exactly what they needed, and you could see Boston Davidson got the instructions from his bench, I'm sure, to say keep both hands on that ball. When he wasn't trying there, to necessarily break one or try and make a massive play is when he took that handoff, he had two hands on the ball. As you know, the Rebels are going to try and strip that one. So massive, massive play here on second down. Do the Saskatoon Hilltops feel they can take a shot, throw one, get it out there, throw one down the seam potentially as they've been able to do a couple times today? Or do they play it safe, run with, with Boston Davidson and force the Rebels to burn their second and last time out? So one timeout remaining for the Rebels. 1.41 on the clock. They did a good job on first down. They just need to limit the Hilltops to eight or less yards on second. Take a timeout and get the ball back. Yeah, if they can do that, if they if they do, if the Saskatoon Hilltops do run this ball, if the Rebels get that stop, obviously the timeout will be used. They can still have well over a minute left and with Cairo Berry or Jaron Hardesty back deep, you never know, you could crack one on a punt return if you're the Rebels. Second down. It is a fake handoff, and Reader going to take it himself. Will he get there? No, he will not. Riley Burfello in on the tackle. It's going to be third and one. They, I, there was a, that was a heck of a defensive play, and I'm not sure what was called on this play, but he's a runner, so there is no rough in the pass or anything on that. That's a big time hit. They call a hold. I was going to say if, if that's some kind of late hit on a quarterback or something like that, I. Missing something, but that's a hold against 82, Saskatoon. the Hilltop. So the, the Rebels Repeat are going to down. take that penalty. The, Hilt the Rebels are going to take the penalty. The Hilltops are going to get another down here on second and long. But that was a big defensive play. I like that call by, by the Hilltops. His reader just tried to pull it. Everybody thought it was going to go to Boston Davidson. And reader nearly got the first down by himself. Second and 17. It all goes for the Hilltops, and Reeder going to hand this ball off to Boston Davidson going right up the middle, gets a great yardage, and he's going to be stopped just shy of the 50-yard line on the Hilltop side of the field. Another timeout there, and, and, and although, that, although the Hilltops aren't going to get enough the first down, what it does for them, if, if you're a Saskatoon Hilltop fan, is you're going to get 10 extra yards. You're going to tilt the field position. You're going to force the Rebels to start the next drive 10 yards deeper than you would normally. And that's huge. At Boston Davidson, he didn't get the first down, but he got 10 yards of it back. It's not 12. So that's a massive play there by, by, the, by the Hilltops. And kudos to the Rebels' defenses. They're going to give their offense one more shot. So 129 is what we have on the official clock here at Starlight Stadium. The rain is held up, but the wind is still sticking around. It is cold, it is wet, it is damp. And we have one more drive of Rebels football this season to present to you. Could be more if they make it successful, but it is absolutely crunch time here for the West Shore Rebels. And if I'm Saskatoon, I'm trying to kick this one right towards the hash and, and the numbers on the sidelines. I'm not putting this anywhere near down the middle of the field with number three back there for the Rebels, Cairo Berry. So if I'm Saskatoon, I'm not as much worried about distance per se as I am a where direction this one, this punt goes for the Hilltops. Matt Wist, who had the interception, boots this one down the left side. Cairo Berry really having to go over and it goes by him. He's going to pick this one up and try and return it downfield. And he is going to be brought out of bounds near the 25-yard line. But it looks like a late hit and a flag is going to give the Rebels better field position. We'll see who this one's against. It was at the far side of the field. You would think it would be going against the Saskatoon Hilltops just because the Rebels had the ball and it was right up where the out of bounds marker is. The, the fans didn't, the Hilltop fans look to react more than the Rebels fans here, but it's going to be unnecessary roughness against the Hilltop. So... There was, there was something on the far side of the field, so 
15 yards there, a minimal return for Cairo Berry on that one, but that 15 yard penalty is big for the Rebels to start this drive. Number seven, Saskatoon. 15 yard penalty. Buckle up, folks. We got a good one here, and this should be fun. The last 78 seconds or so here at Starlight. One last chance for this West Shore Rebels team to etch their name on the Canadian Bowl for the very first time. The Hilltops have done it 22, looking for 23. Jesse takes the snap, looking downfield, pressure coming, skirts away from it, gets it to Hardesty, who rushes to get out of bounds. Did he get there? We don't know. And Reese, <laughs> Reese Kack at the middle of the field lost his helmet, was screaming at the officials for a call. I didn't see what happened, but it looks like Hardesty was able to get out of bounds. 108 left on the clock, second and six. A lot happening on that play there, and although only about a four or five yard gain for the Rebels, it could have been disastrous as T had to scramble and, and, and make an improvise there, and they were able to get five yards, but they've got to get a few more here. Clock stop, but it'll snap. It'll start on the snap of the ball, so let, let's see what happens here on a big second down. Jesse takes the snap. He's going to throw this. It is for Vincent. He's caught it. Does he have it caught? Incomplete, oh, says the far sideline. And that's a, that is a tough, tough break. Vincent's not arguing a whole lot. The official from the far, far side of the field was the one who came in. It wasn't the back judge, it was the side judge who came in. And I, I'm surprised, I mean, he might have had a good look at that as he was coming in from Vincent's open side there, the grandstand side. So he might have had a good look on that. Vincent didn't argue too much. The Hilltops, of course, pleaded that, that that was going to be incomplete. So here we go here, third down and about six to the West Shore Rebels. Third and five, and the Rebels season is on the line right here, right now. Receivers in motion. Jesse takes the snap. Looks like Cack was offside. It's a deep throw. In, it is intercepted, but hold on. It looked like Reese Cack went offside at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be another free yardage for the Rebels. Could be an offside against the Hilltops as they're all pointing to the clock, not knowing the referees have it on the field, but this is going to be, it's not gonna, this play is not going to give the Rebels enough for a first down if it is against the Hilltops. So we're going to see what the call is here. And there you see on your screen, Reese Kack, 47 in white, look to jump the line. So it shouldn't be, it's going to be offside against the Hilltops. That's good news if you're a West Shore Rebel fan. Bad news is it's still going to be a third down. So West Shore is still going to have to pick up this first down here. They're going to have yet another third and short on this one. But that's a break there as, as T, I think, knew he had a free play. Took a shot down the field. It was intercepted, which would have brought the Canadian Bowl back to Saskatoon. But hold on. We got another big third down play here. Third and one. Jesse not under center. He's got two backs with him. Now one. Takes the snap. Jesse, pressure coming, going to throw, caught by Cairo Berry, it's a first down, but he is down within the markers, so they got to get this ball snapped quick because they're going to start the clock right away. So everyone rushing back, it's a Rebels first down, but we are in hurry up time here, 57 seconds left on the clock. 57 seconds left, they get the first down, but like you said, Tyler, they got to get moving as the clock's going to start right now on the start of this play. Receivers are a go, Jesse takes the snap on first down. Throwing down the field, incomplete. C.J. Vincent, the intended receiver, and look who it is. Number 44, Matt Wist, who is having an astronomical game on the Hilltops defense, makes the stop. He's been a beast today for the Saskatoon Hilltops and been a major anchor for this stingy defense. And he makes another big play there. C.J. Vincent's been coming in that area, trying to get those curls. But the Saskatoon Hilltops, especially their linebackers, just so athletic, have been right there. Right in, right in the hip pocket there of C.J. Vincent. Second and 10. The Hilltops faithful making noise at Starlight. Here comes the pressure. Jesse going to roll out. Cack right there. Misses the tackle. T. Jesse going to take it himself, and it's a gain of about eight. And that's going to bring up third and two as T. Jesse scrambles out of the pocket to gain about seven. Barely broke the sack from Reese Cack. And they're going to line up. It's going to be third and about three, maybe four. And they're desperately trying to get in formation here. Clock is now running, 40 seconds to go. Jesse takes the snap on third down, throws, caught by Vincent, that's a first down, and there's a flag on the play, this so stop the rough. clock. This is gonna stop the clock. The Rebels have enough for the first down. I think this might be a rough in the passer call against the Saskatoon Hilltops, and 
I don't know if they're going to like this call, but this could be going another 15 at it to the end of this play. As I was watching the ball downfield, but I saw Jesse's reaction as he got up. And if this is a 15-yard penalty against the Hilltops, that is not a good time to take one of those. And there you go. It also allows the Rebels to be able to regroup, get a play in from the sidelines as they march this call to call and march the family off. So buckle up, folks. This is, a, this is a great CJFL football between two outstandingly talented football teams. And regardless of how this one ends, these two teams are outstanding. It's been a pleasure to watch, but we still got some time left here at Starlight. Reese Kack was the player who took the penalty. He's getting an earful on the Saskatoon Hills, Hilltops uh, sideline. He's not involved in this play. He's one of their key players. Here we go, first and 10. Jesse looking downfield, pressure coming. He's gonna not throw it. He's still waiting with it, and he's gonna be brought down a big sack by the Hilltops. Yeah, the worst part of that one, and Jesse was trying to let it go right near the end, but the worst thing about the Hilt or for that for the Rebels is it's not the yardage, it's the fact that the clock is gonna start here. So I thought Jesse might launch that one towards his own bench and stop the clock, but they gotta get moving here. As the Rebels have no timeouts here, the referees are gonna take a second to place this ball. The Hilltops bench is not happy about that. But Jesse, I thought, once he broke the first couple guys, I thought he was just going to airmail that one over the Rebels bench with no receivers open downfield as the Hilltops did a fantastic job on defense, not letting any Rebel defender or any Rebel receiver break free. Ben Mars in on the sack. A huge stop. That's going to bring up second and 12. Ball at the 35. Jesse takes the snap, throwing to the left, and it is going to be incomplete. Third down and 12 at the 35 with 14 and a half seconds left to go. And the Rebels season is hanging in the balance. That play being incomplete is probably an advantage there to the Rebels as the Saskatoon Hilltops were right there. They were gonna make that tackle for a minimal gain. Now at least if you're the Rebels, you clock a stop. Yes, it's third down, but they weren't gonna make many yards on that one. They gotta get vertical here. These throws out to the sides aren't gonna get it done. You've gotta get inside on those uh, Saskatoon defenders to try and get one down the seams. Extra defensive backs deep in the backfield here for the Hilltops. They're expecting a deep throw. Let's see what happens. Third and 12. Rebels need to make something happen. Here is the throw. It is caught by C.J. Vincent. Knocked out incomplete. That is a heck of a play by the Hilltops there. C.J. Vincent looked to have had enough for the first down. You can see where he is. And that's why a team as good as they are makes plays like that on the defensive side of the ball. And they just knocked that one right out of C.J. Vincent's hands. That is of no fault of his own. That was just a heck of a defensive play by a team that's made them all year long. Nice defensive play by the Saskatoon Hilltops. The Canadian Bowl has stayed out west since 2020. And it looks like for the first time since 2019, the Saskatoon Hilltops are going to be your national champions. Saskatoon Hilltops, just a, one or two kneels down, one kneel down, and then one to finish it is, is going to take all it takes. And that is such a tough loss. Whoever was going to lose this game, it was going to be a tough loss too, as these two teams both have had amazing seasons. The Saskatoon Hilltops getting back to this game and, and winning it after a brief absence. And they wanted this one. They haven't been here in a long time. And they're, they're an amazing organization. And it's an outstanding accomplishment by their players, their coaches, their board, and a tough way to end for the West Shore Rebels today. 22 is sweet, but 23 is sweeter. The Saskatoon Hilltops are your 2023 Canadian Bowl champions. Congratulations, like I say, to Tom Sargent, the entire staff, the players. A hard fought game, and, and we saw two amazing football teams. And, for the Rebel fans, unfortunately, somebody had to lose today. If it was the other way, it would be unfortunate for the Saskatoon Hilltops. But credit to both teams for playing an amazing football game in front of these fans today. And, and the, for the Saskatoon Hilltops are coming out on top in the 2023 Canadian Bowl. You can hear the traveling faithful of the Hilltops. They made the trek 1,660 kilometers here to Victoria and they come away 2023 Canadian Bowl champions. A trip well spent for the Saskatoon Hilltops and their fans. Again, this game 
uh, Tyler, was really a, a game of inches. I mean, there were so many third and shorts, third and ones, third and twos. This game could have gone either way. And in a, in a season for the Rebels where, you know, it was just everything went right, you just got the sense that, you know, as the second half started and they didn't roll over, it left some doubt. No question. I mean, we saw this and we said, like, I mean, we, you hit on it spot on, second and, or third and shorts all day long, tough decisions for both these coaches. Do you kick it? Do you take a safety in your end zone? Do you go for it on third and two? And, and when, you're, when you have those types of decisions, and both Tom Sargent and Dexter Jenke had those today, it's a testament to the team across from you because unless you're playing a really good opponent, you don't have to make as many of those hard decisions as both these gentlemen did today. So it, it's a tough way to end the season, obviously, for the West Shore Rebels, the Hilltops. They made some plays, and football comes down to usually a couple big, big, big plays and turnovers. Like both coaches stressed that, and the, and the line of scrimmage. And, I mean, they, I mean, it was a kudos. The big boys up front on both teams played the ball well. And the big playmakers for both these teams showed up and played. And, and unfortunately, it's, it's a, fortunately for the Rebels, they came out on top. And once again, congrats to the Hilltops. The Saskatoon Hilltops are your 2023 Canadian Bull champions. We're going to take a quick break. Andy Neal will take it from here. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be right back after this quick break. Welcome back to Starlight Stadium in Langford. And so for the 23rd time, the Saskatoon Hilltops are Canadian Bowl champions in the 115th edition, a one score game over the West Shore Rebels, a 17-10 decision. This is the third time these two teams have met in the Canadian Bowl. 2003 was a 59-0 win for the Hilltops. Then it was 37-25 seven years ago here at Starlight Stadium for the Hilltops over the Rebels. And now today, a 17-10 win. The trophy presentation is going on at midfield for the Saskatoon Hilltops. Let's go to that now. Congratulations again, Cairo. The defensive player of the game, we're going to bring up PFC President Randy O'Shaughnessy to give out the award. What an outstanding defensive game he had. Number 44, Matt Whist. And now for the offensive player of the game, Paul Short, the Deputy Commissioner of the Canadian Junior Football League. Love you, Paul. To Saskatoon Hilltop running back number 24, Boss David. to bring upon CJFL Commissioner Dimpekovic and ask the team captains of the Saskatoon to come on over to receive the Canadian Bowl Trophy.
One more round of applause. The 2023 Canadian Bowl champion, Saskatoon Hilltops. Fans, thank you so much for being here. And thank you to the West Shore Rebels. For Saskatoon us. Hilltops, their 23rd Canadian Bowl Championship. Back-to-back -back wins over undefeated teams as well. The St. Clair Saints in the Jostens Cup semifinal in Saskatoon, 43-0. And then the defense comes through once again today in a 17-10 win over the West Shore Rebels. Tyler Bennett, Tyler McLaren have been calling this game. And guys, this going into it seemed like the unstoppable force against the immovable object was sort of the theme going into this one. The Rebels are so great offensively, but the Hilltops are excellent on defense. Both teams are great on both sides of the ball, but it looks like today as often is in championships, defense wins out. Oh, for sure, Andy. And, uh, you know, when, when you look at the game, I mean, the, the Hilltops really were throwing the ball down the field. They had some big plays, Noah Flamin with that big touchdown reception. And it seemed like the Rebels just couldn't get that ball downfield at all. Yeah, we struggled to see that vertical game by the Rebels. And like you said, Tyler, kudos to the Hilltops for being able to make those plays. And they did what they had to do to become Canadian Bowl champions. And when you talk about defense, I mean, Matt West, obviously honored with player of the game. He was kicking the ball away, uh, doing a great job with that. He had an interception. He was just all over the football field in a game where we thought that Reese Kack might be that that dynamite player. I mean, Matt Wiss was uh, really the, the difference maker in this football game. He was at capturing that award, fully deserving for it, for being player of the game. And there's a host of guys that could win that 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 award for the Hilltops. Is there a talented defensive team? And in games like this, it's guys like that that you, you expect to come through, make those big plays when you have to for your team. And, and he was able to do that today. And hey, nothing nothing wrong with uh, to be you know uh, sad about if you're the, the Rebels faithful. I mean, they they came to play today. It was a one score game all the way till the end. I mean, they have to be proud of their performance in this football game. You have to. And I mean, I'm sure if you talk to Coach Janky and the and the coaching staff is. It stings right now. It hurts, and and, and and it will hurt for a couple days, and it'll always stick with you when you lose in a Canadian Bowl or any Canadian Championship. But for the Rebels, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna look back at this and realize that they accomplished a lot, and they had a lot of outstanding individual performances, which in football don't mean as much nearly as much as the team ones. But they're gonna look back at this and, and say, what a season we had. And it's gonna take a little while because you don't forget games like this and and losses like this are tough, and opportunities to get the Canadian Bowls like this are hard as well. But nothing to hang your head out if you're the West Shore Rebels and, and their coaches staff and entire organization. And if you're, you know, on the flip side of the coin, you're the Saskatoon Hilltops. You flew in here on Friday and you leave here Sunday morning as champions. I mean, what a whirlwind 48 hours it must be for them. It's a whirlwind and, and teams have done it and, and you want to get home and celebrate with your friends and family, those that weren't able to make it here and alumni and board and volunteers and it's, it's BC's won the, this championship on the road before and it's nice to win them at home because obviously you got your everybody in the whole stadium is rooting for you and, and for the Hilltops I'm sure that as they celebrate tonight and head back to Saskatoon they're going to want to see their friends and family but this sure feels sweet for them I'm sure. So at the end of the day, it was uh, it could have gone either way, but Saskatoon comes out on top. Uh, as you can see, hugs all around, and you know just the vast array of emotions uh, on both sides of the coin. As it uh, looks like uh, we're ready to set it back down to Andy and uh, Tyler. Thanks for doing this, and Andy, back to you. All right, thanks very much, guys. And you mentioned when Saskatoon had the field goal to make it 17-7. That two possession game just seemed so huge with the way the Rebels were struggling on offense to be able to get points on the board. They were able to get a field goal right after that, but still, uh, that was tough to overcome against such a good defensive group. And uh, obviously this is a tough one for the Rebels, hard to believe for the Hilltops. They lost in 2000 to Langley. They've won 14 straight Canadian Bowls since then. Matt Wist, who's the defensive player of the game for the Saskatoon Hilltops, he's got control of the Canadian Bowl right now, the 23rd time that the Hilltops have done that. And uh, Trey Raider is the quarterback for the Saskatoon Hilltops. Have we got him, Mike? Okay, Trey, 
congratulations on the national championship. Just tell us what you're going through right now as a Canadian Bowl champ. Have you got me, Trey? Trey Raider, have you, uh, can you hear me? Am I supposed to hear something? Looks like, uh, looks like Trey anything, can't... Uh, get us right now hopefully we'll get that connection uh, we don't want him to miss the photograph either as the team celebrates with the uh, Canadian Bowl around him so uh, maybe we'll get him in a couple of minutes but uh, boy what a win for the Saskatoon Hilltops this is and they're celebrating don't want Trey to miss this opportunity this is a once in a lifetime chance to do this and there he is getting into the uh, picture that uh, has become so famous for champions to do at the end of uh, winning a title game but what a way on the road for the Saskatoon Hilltops to do it 7 nothing at the half and looked like it was going to be a low scoring game which it was for the most part big play for the Rebels right off the bat Cairo Berry able to score a touchdown to make it a 7-7 game early in the second so you kind of wondered if the momentum would change in this ball game but uh, the Hilltops were able to get Another score and then the big field goal to make it a two possession game and then held on to that. And you think about the fourth down chances that the Rebels had, couldn't cash in on them. Some big penalties, some momentum swings throughout this. And I went to the two, it's been such a cold day. This day has been just as hard on the broadcasters as it is on the players, but uh, a whole host of the rain, the wind, and uh, just the cold here on Vancouver Island. And now the Saskatoon Hilltops feeling a lot warmer now that they are the 2023 Canadian Bowl champions. They won six straight from 2014 to 2019. So uh, we'll try to get Trey Raider here in a little bit. As the uh, Hilltops continue their celebration, it's going to be a good night of partying, I don't doubt, for the visitors here to Vancouver Island, who I can't imagine can't wait to get back to Saskatoon and see all their family, friends, and fans on this national championship decision. So we'll await the guest from the uh, Hilltops and uh, hopefully we'll get Trey Raider here in a little bit on the field. He's on his way it sounds like, so uh, we'll hear from Trey in just a moment as more pictures are getting taken with the Canadian Bowl Championship. Been th four years since the Hilltops had played in this game. 2006 was the last time they went three years without playing in the championship and here they are winners in Langford. So Trey Reeder, thanks again for joining us. Hope you can get us this time. Uh, just tell us what's going through your mind as a Canadian Bowl champion. Oh, there's a lot of emotions going on right now and a bunch of guys in tears. It, it means so much right now that we won this game. Uh, I'm super happy right now. Talk about the game plan if you could and uh, you know, the Rebels offense was so explosive this year and just seeing what your defense was able to do today against such a explosive offense, what did that do for the lift for the offense? Oh, it just really showed how good they were. There's just so many guys in that defense, a bunch of fifth years who deserve that that uh, that cup we just won and show that when they're when they're go out there and not allowing the other team to score. It puts, uh, it's like we got to score now for them and you have to do it for our defense because our defense is unbelievable. Boston Davidson was the offensive player of the game for the Hilltops today. Uh, what about his contributions, not just today, but throughout the season? Oh, he's un an unbelievable player. And every time I hand him the ball, I just watch him go. And every day he's working so hard, the best leader I've ever been, been with. And just not enough good things I can say about him. He's awesome. You know, we talked about it in the fourth quarter when it became 17-7, you were able to get the drive and get a two possession game. How much of a buffer did that feel like in the fourth quarter to be able to get a 10-point lead? Oh, it was amazing to get that. That 10-point lead uh, was really something special because even if they went down and scored, we still had the lead. And I felt that our offense could have went down again and do it again. So uh, to get that 10 points up was huge in that point of the game. Finally, uh, just what about tonight? Uh, what are you planning on celebrating and how much are you looking forward to getting back home? Oh, I can't wait to get home and, and celebrate with my family <laughs> and, and talk to everyone. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait for it. Dre, congratulations on being a Canadian Bowl champion here for 2023 for you and the Hilltops. Trey Ryder, quarterback for the Saskatoon Hilltops. They are the 2023 Canadian Bowl champions. Champions for the 23rd time. Again, 14 and 1 since 2000 for the Hilltops. They've won their last 14 and 10 and 1 against BCFC teams. As we'll come back to wrap from Langford, BC, the West Shore Rebels falling short for the first time this year. The Hilltops definitely deserving champions. An undefeated season, a 17-10 final here at Starlight Stadium in Langford.